If this thing's telling the truth, there could be body parts inside here. Ah! Hello everybody out there in YouTube land, my name is Dan Chaos, and welcome back to Zero Escape, the Nonary Games. Nona meaning nine. Nine people, nine hours, nine doors to go through. Elsewise, everybody gets blown up because they got a bomb in their belly. Gotta follow the rules. Number nine did not, and he blew up. Seemingly. It was behind a closed door, we heard a bomb, we saw blood, we saw bits. But wouldn't it be more of a trick to have the guy who knew about Zero cooperating with him behind the scenes? It'd be almost as devious as having Zero be one of the nine people who are in the room with us. Which is not out of the question, but I have no reason to distrust anybody yet. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Because YouTube won't notice me unless you do. Everybody except for Junpei. <laughs> Uh, aka Jumpy, is going by a pseudonym. Doesn't matter. What does matter is that we are in the third door, I think. We are inside the kitchen with Dinah. Actually, Dinah's not one of them. Okay, let's figure out what we can use in here. Wow, this pot looks like it's made out of silver. I bet drinking tea from this pot would be really yummy. Spending a day off with June drinking tea. Could such a day even happen for me? Jumpy? Oh, nothing. We don't really need hot water, so we should be moving on. Yeah, we're in enough hot water as it is. Actually, it was cold water, because we're in a replica of the Titanic, and from initially waking up, it was starting to sink, and we had to escape, and now we are on B deck? D deck? I don't know how ships work. They float, and I barely understand why. It's volume versus mass displacement. Whatever. I like June, but she's a bit of airhead. Kind of a mystery as to why our main character, Junpei, Jumpy, actually ended up with his long lost childhood best friend, June, in the same location. And two others know each other, Clover and Snake, four and two, their brother and sister. But it could have been staged. There might not be a bomb in us at all, and it might just be fear doing all of the work. But who wants to take that kind of risk? Now, before I was so rudely interrupted, Partition that splits the room on the right side of the wall. It's one of those swinging doors. You see them a lot in between kitchens and dining areas and restaurants. But at this door, you need to run all the way around the partition to get to the other side. That'd really be a pain in the butt, huh? Well, I guess it's not really important, but still. Wow, Jumpy. You can really reach high. That's why I'm Jumpy, apparently. <laughs> yeah, I can jump pretty high. Here we go. Here we go. I don't know why they're having these conversations in what seems to be a life-threatening situation, but there's just some there's some creepiness to this game, but there's also some wackiness to it, and that is a very strange balance that we have. Almost Yakuza-like. A voucher says, appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F. Is that a clue? I didn't pick it up. Nine plates look pretty expensive. They're plates for appetizers. Remember, appetizers usually come on square plates. Okay, okay, well, excuse me, princess. <laughs> They're all nine plates, aren't they? Actually, there's ten of them. If you flip these over, they look like hats. The middle is super deep for a plate. They're soup plates. They're made that way so that the soup doesn't spill. If we ever get out of here, you should treat yourself to a nice dinner out. What makes you think I'm a poor college student? <laughs> what makes you think a poor college student has the money to do something like that? Oh, there you go. I think there are 15 of these plates. I'm assuming they're for seafood. How the heck can you tell that? They look just like any other plate from the 99 cent store. If you ever take a lady out to dinner, you're going to embarrass yourself. I feel sorry for June. What? Uh, 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 why the heck are you bringing up June? The lady doth protest too much, methinks. You are not terribly subtle. <laughs> uh, I like being the normal, the normal guy who doesn't understand what's going on here, because everybody else is just too eclectic. There's a bunch of little wavy ridges on this plate. Those plates are for serving meat. Ugh, you really are ignorant, aren't you? Come on, it's not like I need to know this crap. Jeez. It is true. Do I really need to know this? And if the woman you're gonna go on a date with knows all these plates anyway, and you don't, 
probably not the right woman. <laughs> You're probably out of your tax bracket. It looks like you enter numbers into this thing. Is it an oven timer? It's probably for entering a passcode. After all, the oven door is locked. My guess is that it will open if we put in the correct code. And what code might that be? We've all got... All we've got here is a pot and frying pan. Oh, and a pressure cooker. Well, I guess we could use some of those as weapons. What kind of idiot are you? You're gonna run around holding that thing while you're looking for the dead? Hey man, it was just a joke. Why so serious? Joker reference? Why so serious? Pressure cooker's just a pot with a really fancy lid on it, but it could explode if you're not careful. And yeah, the dead is like the second panel that you have to activate once you enter the red. There's no redemption, but there's red and a dead. It's like the beginning and the end. You enter one code, the bomb starts. You enter the second code, the bomb stops. There, and your code is your wristwatch. All right, there's something over here. It's a card reader. Since the light's red, I figure it's probably still locked. The key card for it's gotta be around here somewhere. We just gotta find it. Mm-hmm. It's probably in the oven. There are some bottles of seasoning in here. Ah, a little bit of seasoning. It's only a partition. There's nothing else no worth noting here. But you feel like noting about everything, don't you? Mm. A whetstone. It's for honing a knife. Not sharpening. Sharpening removes material. Honing moves the material back into place on a knife. A sink. It's still got water in it. There's a couple plates in there, but I don't think they're going to help us much. Just assume everything that's placed in here is for a reason. A trash can. There's nothing inside of it. Well, better than being full of rotten food, I suppose. I think this is a set. Not not a replica of a ship on the water, but a set. That's why all the windows are shut. And other than the water rising, I don't think there's been any like shift or movement in the balance of the ship. And if it's a if it's a replica, there wouldn't be a need for food because it's not in an actual surface. It's a replica like you would find at the Museum of Natural History. Dang it, there's nothing in here. Hey Santa, digging through the trash really suits you. What the heck did you say? Listen, lady, I did you a favor. I knew you'd just piss and moan, so I did it for you. Oh my. I don't recall asking you to do anything. Ugh. I ought to throttle you. Excuse me? Well, if you're offering. Uh, does, does it feel colder in here? I hope that's just your relationship and not something going wrong with the air conditioning unit. Yeah, can't reach the third trash can. That's why there's a, a barrier on the screen, you know, like you're looking through the lens of Blue Beetle or something, which is useful. It makes you not have to worry about the corner so much for information. All right, it's going. Do you think this was part of Zero's plan? Probably. Kind of hard to believe there's a chef on board somewhere. I wonder what's in the drawer. You see the metal grate on top of the grill? They make it like that so that the fat and juice could drip off the meat while it cooks. Yeah, into the collection down below. So it's filled with fat! Won't open. Looks like the area under the plate opens up. No, you can't. I already checked. It's sealed shut. I think that's where the coal goes. Ah, so it's a coal grill. Cool. Well, it makes sense. It's, it's imitating the Titanic. So everything would be of a certain time period. There's a voucher at the end of the counter. This voucher doesn't match the number of plates on the table. It says appetizer nine, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F on the voucher. And the plates on the table are nine appetizers, 16 meat, 10 soup, 15 seafood. Maybe they're using hexadecimal here. Aw oh man, I hate hexadecimal. I can't remember how to do it. I learned in computer class, but it was annoying. And hexadecimal is, it's a number system that goes 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F, 10, 11. You're familiar with base 10, right? I wish I was, but I forget all that stuff. That's the normal system of numbers. The base 10 equivalents for hexadecimal numbers would go like this. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 13, E equals 14, F equals 15, and 10 equals 16. The 10 becomes 16 in base 10. I know it sounds strange, but you can think of it as just six letters added on to the normal number system after nine. A equals 10, B equals 11, C equals 12, D equals 12, and so on. I think I get it. I barely got it to pass high school computer class. 
Hexadecimal is like another form of computer language you can use other than binary. And I don't even remember what it was useful for. Hexadecimal. I wonder if it's some kind of hint. Yeah, maybe. Junpei, do you remember what I told you about the hexadecimal code earlier? Yeah, of course I do. Alright then, here's a little quiz for you. What would 9 plus F be in base 10? Uh, A, B, C, D, e, F. So, plus 6, so 9, 10. Yes, I'm counting my fingers. It'd be 15. I didn't even have to. He's, he's solving it for me. Uh, well, F equals 15. So it'd be 9 plus 15, which would be 24. That's right. Good job. You're a fast learner. Yeah, let him, let him work it out. I never learned the multiplication tables, okay? I still count stuff on my fingers. <laughs> I sound so stupid. I don't know hexadecimal. I don't know the multiplication tables. Well, do you? Do you remember? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. Yeah. I think it was the nine multiplication tables. The only one that I know is that if you hold your 10 fingers up at your hand and then nine times three, it gives you 27. And nine times four, it gives you 36. And stuff like that. That's the only multiplication table thing that I remember. But that still also counts as counting my fingers. So don't be impressed. 10 is 8. Why do I need to know it? Why do I need to know this? 9. This is probably what you're supposed to. Where you're, yeah. You're supposed to enter the password here. Maybe if you put in the right number, it'll open the oven door. That's what I'm trying to do. Well, at least one of you is trying to be helpful. Hey, Junpei, why don't you try entering the numbers we found on the voucher earlier? The one that said appetizer 9, meat dish 10, soup A, seafood dish F. So it'd be 9, 16, 10, and 15? 9, 16, 10, 15. Alright, convert the 10, A and F to base 10. Well, it's worth a shot. No dice. Looks like there's too many numbers. I figured it would be. Slightly numbers on the voucher isn't the actual passcode. I could live with that. Thank you for all of that unnecessary information for my everyday life. It's a lot of notes. They've got a bunch of stuff written on them, but it doesn't look like a code or anything like that. What about, what's the, what's the silver thing on top of? This is just a napkin. It's funny how small this room is, and yet, it, and, and yet I don't know where I should be looking. Uh, why do I think every door is gonna lead into a hallway or something? There was this extra, Back room. The Frigidaire, mon frere. The shelf has a white cloth on it. And voila. There's so much stuff in here. A whole lot of cans. This is probably a pantry. Yeah, pantry, fridge, whatever. There's milk in here. Milk in an iron barrel? Judging by the rust, it's probably really old. Maybe we shouldn't of oh maybe we shouldn't open it i don't think it's a pretty sight uh, good thing it has a label on it otherwise i wouldn't have known this was cheese i feel my skyrim power is activating i ate all of the cheese hey there's something behind the cheese yeah i know you're right why don't we move some of the cheese all right guys time to move it june and i need to look, take a look behind you why are we talking to the cheese there's a little green bottle back there Olive oil, lime juice, a bottle of oil! There are a number of cheeses lined up on the shelf. This is Gouda cheese, the most famous Dutch cheese. If you don't cut open the casing, it usually won't go bad. So you can store it at room temperature for quite a while. So we can eat this? Most likely. Uh, I'm not hungry. At all. I guess it's hard to get hungry in a situation like this. And yet, it's not too difficult to be horny. Because that's just all that's happening with this with this situation between June and Junpei. Then again, who, who am I to judge? Eh, let's find out. Ta-da! Yeah, that would just ruin the whetstone. I wonder, if I got one door wrong, what about this door? Hmm. This bolt is rusted in place. It won't budge. Of course, maybe I put some oil on it. That's what I was thinking. H hey, just a little bit of oil and come on. Come on, you little son of a... <laughs> Thank you. Whoa. Huh. Yes. Got you, you little bastard. You did it, Jumpy. You're so smart. Oh, it's cold in here. Thanks for speaking up. What is this place? It's a freezer. Are you blind? 
It's a freezer. Oh, no way. That's way too cold for me. I'll freeze solid in seconds. Sorry, but I'm afraid I'll have to pass on this one. I'm going to leave the rest to you. Oh, whoa. It's really cold in here. Hey, you don't need to be in here. You had a fever just a little bit ago. You should stay outside. We got this. No, I'm fine. My fever's gone now. But... Huh? Ah! <sighs> oh no. Quick, give me a calculator. Is this gonna work? Yes, yes, I, I think she will understand. She's very knowledgeable in this field. No! Why did it suddenly close? Ah! The knob's frozen! But why? It looks like the pipe next to it broke and. Hey! Lotus! You're out there, right? Open the door! What do you want? What's going on? The door won't open! Try opening it from that side! Please! Oh, fine. If you say so, hold on. It's no use. It won't budge. You've got more people in there. You figure it out. Still dang. <laughs> ho, 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 Santa. Welcome to the North Pole. Oh. At least you've got long sleeves. Uh, God damn it. Anyway, uh, let, let, let's find a way out. If we don't get moving, we're, we're going to be permanent residents. Two heads are better than none. <laughs> I like the way you phrased that. I, I'm sure we'll, we'll figure something out. Yeah, you're right. Let's just take a good look around this room, okay? Right. Well, I don't see a clock counting down or anything, so I assume we're fine. There's some frozen meat up there. Looks like pork. Huh? What's this? Looks like a tag or something? Uh, a chunk of pork with a tag? Are we sure this is pork? It might be the other white meat. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? Dry ice. Am I gonna MacGyver my way out of here? Dry ice is just frozen carbon dioxide, right? Yeah, we better not open it in here. We've got a limited supply of oxygen. Yeah, it is. I wonder how warm it has to get for it to, to turn back into gas again. Hell if I know. How is that going to help us anyway? Oh, well, I figured we might be able to use it to get out of here. Carbon dioxide sublimation point is negative 109 degrees. Whoa, that was way smarter than I thought you were going to say. I English very well. Any warmer than that, and it'll turn into gas. Any lower, and it becomes a solid. Oh, how do you know that? <laughs> Despite my looks, I'm the clean... Oh, <laughs> the queen of random knowledge. <laughs> We're both screwing up words. Looks bad to mess up when you're showing off. <laughs> oh, you're so cold your mouth's going numb? <laughs> yes, yeah, that's fight. You're just doing that on purpose, aren't you? <laughs> Come on, guys. Don't you think that's kind of weird? I wonder why it doesn't turn into a liquid first. Sublimation is when it goes from a solid to a gas directly. There's no liquid point to it. Uh... Yeah, it is kind of weird. Oh, but it can turn into a liquid. Oh, carbon dioxide turns to liquid if you put it under high enough pressure. Hmm. But at one atmosphere, normal air pressure... It won't turn into a liquid, right? Oh, that's right. Instead of melting, it'll do what's called sublimating and change immediately from a solid state to a gaseous one. Man, this, is a, this game educates people. Come on. And I know half of this, so I feel smart. See, that is weird. Water's a liquid between 32 degrees and 212 degrees. So why isn't that the case for carbon dioxide? There's a kind of ice that doesn't turn into liquid when it goes above 32 degrees. Hmm? Huh? I heard about it. Its melting point is 96 degrees. Ice with a melting point of 96 degrees? You mean there's water that freezes at 96 degrees? Yeah, well, 
You could also look at it as ice that won't melt until it's 96 degrees. Uh, is it, is it atom? An atom becomes an isotope when it gains an extra neutron. It doesn't change into another element. So this could be, uh, uh, dihydrogen monoxide that has, uh, extra neutron atoms in it. So what's this ice with a melting point of 96 degrees called? I heard it's called ice nine. Ice nine. Ice nine. Originally, Ice-9 was a made-up substance invented by a science fiction author. <sighs> but recently, scientists have discovered that such a substance actually exists. Wait, hold up. So is this thing called Ice-9, or is it water? Like I said, if the ice is over 96 degrees, it'll be liquid. If it's under that, it'll solidify. So you could think of it as a polymorph of H2O. Mm -hmm. Here, think of it like diamonds and graphite. They're both made of carbon, right? But depending on the structure of the crystallization, oh, the hardness and structure are completely different. So you're saying normal water and this ice nine are like that? Yep. Have you heard the story about the crystallization of glycerin? One of the elements of nitroglycerin? For 150 years after the discovery of glycerin, people cooled it warmed it. They did all sorts of things to it. But whatever they did, it never crystallized. However, one day in 1920, some glycerin on its way to England by ship was discovered to have crystallized during the trip. Scientists around the world wanted to research this new crystallized form of glycerin and asked for seeds. Seed crystals, that is, so they could grow their own. Oh, a seed is a sample of the original crystallized substance. With a seed crystal, further crystallization of glycerin would be easy. You do the same thing with sugar crystals. Not only did the glycerin encouraged by seed crystals begin to crystallize, even the samples nearby did, even though they were tightly sealed. Mm. And it didn't end there. After that day, it doesn't matter where in the world it is, all glycerin crystallizes naturally when cooled to less than 64 degrees. Before that day, no matter how glycerin was cooled, it refused to crystallize. Is this real? Because it sounds real, but only if you apply quantum physics. But once the crystallization had begun, it was almost like... How do I put it? Where'd Santa go? Did he crystallize? It was almost like all the glycerin in the world was communicating. Communicating in some way that we can't sense. And this is where the spooky stuff comes in. And now it's happening everywhere. Wow, that's that's pretty interesting. But uh, what does that have to do with Ice Nine? What she's saying is that it's a lot like Ice Nine. What happened? I mean, a lot like? Oh, that would be bad. If water everywhere started freezing at 96 degrees, man. It'd be the end of the world. At any rate, we're not gonna have to worry about the end of the world unless we can get out of here pretty damn quick. What's confusing me is that some of the stuff that they're saying I know is real, and some of it I can't account for. Can glycerin even crystallize? All right, guys, I think that's enough of that. I didn't think we'd get quite this far off topic. It seems to be the only thing we're doing, although I'm doing it too, so we're in this together. I mean. I know I'm kind of at fault here, but we can't be screwing around anymore. S seriously, I might go by the name Santa right now, but I didn't grow up in Iceland. <laughs> I freaking hate the cold. So let's get cracking, all right? We gotta find a way out of here. Selfish, isn't he? Ice Nine is interesting and all, but we can discuss it more once we get out of this freezer. He's not selfish. He's being pragmatic. We don't want to die in the freezer, so we shouldn't be talking about Ice Nine, even though it has a number nine in it, which might relate to the Nonary game. It feels like they're giving me hints, but it also feels like every character in this game is just getting sidetracked on some sort of pseudoscience. Frozen chicken. <laughs> Give me a few ingredients. We can go outside and grill. Why is there a freezer in the freezer? Why is there an ice box in this walk-in freezer? And yet another freezer. Is this rope? Sturdy rope. Okay, if I was a Mythbuster, what would I do? Uh, I'd blow stuff up. It's a rope. Well, we could use it to attach something to something else, I suppose. The bare minimum of what you do with a rope. Or we could get it over with quickly. Just 
high to the roof. What's this? Water bottle. A water bottle. Yes, it is. <laughs> but is it full or empty? Hope I picked up enough stuff out there to not die in here. What? All right, the dry ice is all in pieces. <laughs> I was just going, I was just mashing buttons. So I use a frozen chicken that hit the dry ice. I'm just gonna break it up. Does that mean I can fit the pieces in the water bottle now? I'm gonna put these pieces of dry ice into the water bottle. I don't, I don't get it yet. I guess the rope is gonna go with it next, but if it heats up, it'll sublimate and release CO2, which will increase the pressure in the bottle. Are we trying to make it explosive? And let's just tie a rope on here. Water, bottle, bomb. I'm glad the game knows what it's doing because I was just guessing. There was a hole in the wall over here, right? All right. There's water dripping from this pipe. Yes, the water will melt the CO2 and cause it to release gas. It looks like when the pipe burst, the water hit the doorknob and froze it in place. This water actually seems almost warm. Very important knowledge. Hey, Junpei, didn't you find some dry ice earlier? Yeah. There's warm water coming out of that pipe. Hey, if we put some of that dry ice and some of the warm water together in something we can close up... Hey, you've already got one! Well, heck, just use that! Okay, I had to click on the door, not the pipe. Put water into the bottle with dry ice, and make sure the lid's closed. Now I just have to put this makeshift bomb on the doorknob. Alright, that's set. So, uh, what do we do now? We just need to give it a little, uh, tap. The bottle's already about to pop. If we just throw a rock or something at it, it'll go off all on its own. A small rock? Huh. A small rock. I got some frozen pork. Alright, this ought to do the trick. Ah, some dry ice, huh? Not a bad idea. Would this really work? It makes about as much sense as using liquid water and, like, potassium. Alright guys, stand back. Actually, we should probably hide somewhere. Where exactly do you expect us to hide, genius? Well, there's another freezer in the freezer. There isn't really anywhere big enough. Yeah, there is. Look, right here. We can hide in there. Come on, mm. get inside, quick. Work for Indiana Jones. All right, here I go. Three, four, five. You're counting the wrong way. <laughs> oh, oops. <laughs> what the heck? That is a really sad excuse for a joke, man. Sorry, dude. All right, for real this time. You guys ready? Yes, whenever you're ready. Just throw the damn thing. I agree. All right, here I go. Three, two, one. But was that in hexadecimal? Jumpy! The ice on the door, is it gone? Yeah, it's gone! The blast must have shattered it. Yes! All right, let's see if it opens. Hooray! We're out! Move! <laughs> oh, god damn it! Hot, 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 hot. Fuck! <laughs> well, you did just grab the grill. What did you think would happen? <laughs> did you know that your, uh, your cold and warm sensors uh, in your body actually uh, flip on and off between pain sensors? So that if you're feeling something warm, it, it moves uh, from the pain sensor from on to off so you can feel warm and vice versa. So if you feel something cold and warm at the same time, your body doesn't know what to do. So you actually trigger pain sensors, even though you're just feeling something safely warm and cold at the same time. Was that a fun fact or just a fact? You can let me know. They're, they're, they're giving out these weird facts, too. Let me join in on the fun. They're great. Hey, where's Lotus? Yeah, where is she? She left us there to freeze. Ooh. Oh, welcome back. Oh my gosh. I'm starting to get tired of waiting for you guys. You're useless. What were you doing? What do you mean, what was I doing? I was waiting. We were gonna die! Oh yeah? But you didn't. So everything worked out alright, didn't it? But, what the hell?! <laughs> Just kidding. It might not look like it, but I was really worried. Mm. Oh, don't give me that crap! I'm telling the truth. I mean, if you died, then I'd be in trouble too. Fair. If you died, then I'd be stuck here, and I'd die too. See? Uh, Self-interest. I did all I could. 
I even looked around to see if there was anything I could use to pry open the door. But I couldn't find anything. So, all I could do was wait. I mean, what else did you want me to do? Call the cops? Fine. But there's one thing I have to ask you. What's that? You didn't close the door, did you? Wait, what? You think I closed the door on you? Mm. Why would I do something like that? It closed on its own. I told you before, if you die, then I die too. Yeah, I guess so. Mm. If she really wanted to kill us, all she had to do was bar the door from the outside. But she didn't. Well, she didn't do anything. Mm. She's only lazy, or negligent at least. Not an attempted murderer. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I doubted you. Hmm? Oh, yes, well that's all right. As long as you understand. Hey, no more screwing around, you two. Break time's over. Especially for you, lady. You've just been sitting on that fat ass of yours while we were freezing to death. How rude. I was plenty busy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about you put all that energy into something besides bitching? Let's go. <laughs> Back where we all started. Except now I've got a piece of meat with a tag frozen in it. Let us grill. Frozen piece of pork. Hey, what's that? Looks like there's something. A piece of paper inside. If you try to pull it out, it might tear. Maybe you can melt it if you put it on something warm. Something warm. Something warm. Think, think, think. Why don't we just use the grill? Didn't someone burn themselves on something earlier? Ha, nice jab. Okay, mighty meaty time over here. Guess I'll put this meat on the grill. Be careful that the tag doesn't burn. Hey, what are you doing? What are you going to do if the paper burns? Come on, it'll be fine. I mean, it's not like it's gonna burn right away, right? We just gotta keep an eye on it, and the paper will be fine. Well, they can argue all they want. I'm gonna keep an eye on this pork. Because I'm hungry. Cool. It looks like it's about time. I'm gonna try taking the paper out. Jumpy, be careful. Yeah, I don't have a spatula, so what am I gonna do with the meat? Sweet of her to care, but I know what I'm... Ouch! See? I told you. Hey, what the heck are you doing? Hurry up and take the paper out. It's not coming out. This thing's frozen stiff. I can't get it out. So are we going to have to cut the meat? Yeah, looks like it. There's too much mass and not enough surface area on the meat. So the center is still cold while the outside is being cooked. You should have just sliced it up. But I still haven't found the knife. And I bet I'm going to find a dull knife. That's why I've got a wet stone. There's spatulas and stuff over here. Doesn't see, but there's a spatula. There's a spatula. There's a spatula. Dang it. Did you see that action movie that came out last week? Nah, I heard it was critically panned. I don't know, it's pretty enjoyable with a little pot. Ha, get it? Pot. I don't condone the use of marijuana. Well, I mean, if you, as long as you're eating it or something, it's fine. But don't smoke it, because then you can't control where the waste product goes, and it ends up in the lungs of other people who didn't ask for it. I feel that way about all smoke stuff. Maybe barbecue, but I feel like everybody wants that. <laughs> and we still got these. I don't know what these are for. Oh, now you're gonna let me mess with this thing? Yeah, you didn't want me to mess with it until I'd gone in the correct order. A rusty knife? I don't think we'll be able to use it while it's like this. It's futile. Futile? You know, a waste, useless, pointless. It has a point, it's just dull. Oh, um, uh, any particular reason you wanted to bring that up? Oh, no reason really. I was just thinking about futility. Huh? Why were you thinking about futility? Why are we having conversations like this when we are in danger? Well, it has something to do with the Titanic. Okay. The Titanic? Yep. Have you ever heard the story that the sinking of the Titanic was predicted? You already told me that there was a mummy on the ship. Was Nostradamus also a passenger? I mean, if you throw a dart at a calendar, you're going to predict something. If I say yes, I have, will she stop? Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. There was a novel that had a bunch of stuff in it that described the sinking of the Titanic before it actually sank. Why is all of this reminding me of that horror game? The Dark Pictures Anthology, Man of Medan. 
that story where a whole bunch of people end up stuck on a ship and they think it's haunted, but in the end it's not. Spoiler alert, we're all stuck on a ship and we're solving puzzles that require some level of arithmetic or science, but every time we run into a puzzle, someone else is mentioning some sort of pseudoscience mysticism perspective of all of it. And I'm fine with that. It's making the characters say weird stuff and letting me get to know them as weird people, but the game itself is not doing a good job of making me think that there's some sort of supernatural goings on here. It's just some freak show who is very intelligent and laid out a whole lot of different escape rooms for us. And these victims are just adding a subtext that's not really there. Yeah, that's the one. The title of the novel is Futility. Hmm. It was written 14 years before the Titanic sank. But... I know, I know. I mean, I didn't know the name of the book, but... The story was the same, right? It was just like what happened on the Titanic? Yeah. Well, I heard it was all a hoax. A hoax? I heard that the stuff that matched up to the Titanic so well was actually added after it sank. Apparently, the only thing that was the same originally was that a boat ran into an iceberg and sank. But the novel was published in 1898. 14 years before the accident. But they can release new editions. Like I said, that was the first print of the book. 14 years later, the author heard about what happened to the Titanic. He figured that was his chance, you know? He just went back and changed some stuff in his novel, so that it matched the Titanic exactly. Really? Really. There's no such thing as premonitions or any of that stuff. But, 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 that wasn't the only book that predicted the Titanic sinking. It, it wasn't? Yep. It was a screenplay by James Cameron. There were two other similar stories written by a man named William Thomas Stead. Both of them before the accident. One in 1886 and one in 1892. Ship sinking it has been a fear since we started traveling by boat. So what? Stead wrote two stories that had striking similarities to the Titanic disaster. In one, two ships collided. Many of the passengers died because there weren't enough lifeboats. In the other, a ship collided with an iceberg and sank. Hmm, I don't know. I mean, I'll give you that it seems a little weird, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't too uncommon for ships to hit icebergs back in the day, or even other ships. Mm hmm? Right, I knew you'd say that. And then why did you say it anyway? Hmm? But what if Stead had some sort of special powers? To be more specific, what if he had the ability to do automatic writing? You do know I'm holding a rusty knife, right? What? Uh, automatic writing? Wait, are you? Are you talking about when someone's possessed by a spirit and then they, they write a bunch of stuff without knowing what they're writing? That's neat. But isn't that also called being in the zone? When you just let the creative energy flow out of you and you're just writing and writing and writing and then you're not really sure what was you and what was not you? I saw the movie Soul. Yes. What do you mean, yes? That stuff's a load of bull. Okay, let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. These guys still couldn't have predicted the sinking of the Titanic. When this Stead dude wrote his thing, nobody had died on the Titanic yet. So if automatic writing is about being possessed by dead people, who the hell possessed him so he could write that stuff? Hmm. Got you there. That's not it. What's not it? Stead wasn't possessed by a spirit. He was doing the possessing. Give me strength. Oh. Hmm. What are you smoking? <laughs> no smoking. It's bad. William Thomas Stead was a passenger on the Titanic. Was he? He just wrote down what he saw with his own eyes 20 years before it happened. Um, well, uh... <laughs> well, uh, why, why don't we talk about this some other time, okay? Yeah, and it's a good thing time isn't progressing at a normal pace. Otherwise, one, we'd be all dead because we're talking too much. And two... My pork dinner will be burned. Huh? But... Come on, let's get back to it. 
Yay! Yeah. Combine. Maybe we'll use the whetstone to sharpen the knife. No, it's honing. I've already said it. You can't sharpen it because that's removing material. Honing is putting material back. Whatever. I should be able to cut something pretty good with it. Whetstones don't remove rust. See? We're, we're pretending that we're using science, but then you do stuff like this. <laughs> right, now that I've sharpened the knife. Yes, I cut the pork. Awesome, Junpei. Now we can cut out the paper. Pork note. Maybe if we put in the right number, it'll open the oven door. Junpei, maybe the note you found earlier. Yeah, I know. Do you know how to enter those numbers? I think E is for enter and C is for clearing. So basically, when I'm ready to submit my answer, I press E. So if I screw up, I press C, right? Lotus knob. All right, let's give it a shot. 43. Oh. Sounds like metal is falling. Well, I guess that went well. Shall I open? Yeah, the door open. Good job, Jumpy. I'll take this Saturn key card. Will I need that for the Saturn door? I know I'll need it for this door over here. Let us escape. Yes. I think it's unlocked now. You did it, Jumpy. Let's get out of here. Yes, let's go. You found it. I think we've been here before. The elevators are over there, so that means... We went into the kitchen through that door and came out on this side. That means the map was right. Looks like. Then let's use it to plan our next move. Next move? Yeah, we need to decide where to go from here, don't we? He's right. Let's get started. From the looks of it, there are four possible routes. Let's just keep it simple and call them A, B, C, and D. First, A and B. They both seem to connect to a room that looks L-shaped. Yeah, there were two doors. But they were both locked. We couldn't open them. Now, Route C. This goes all the way to the main staircase. That means it's door five, one of the numbered doors. And do you think we would meet up with the other four after this hallway? No, I don't think we will. Why not? Look, there by the stairs. See how the gate is open? When we went into the kitchen, it was closed. But it's open now. What do you think that means? They opened it. Most likely. And if we take Route C, we're going backwards. That would be pointless. Then that means... Route D, then. D it is. Yep, Route D. Root down. Then we're set. And everything looks okay here. Let's check the next deck just to be sure. Yeah, just like I thought, D deck is totally underwater. Just like the bottom of the central staircase. At least the water level hasn't really changed. Small comfort. May as well head back to C deck. Hmm, what else is here? There are two elevators over there at the top of the stairs, just like the floor above. Hold on, these are kind of different. See? There's a card reader on the side. Another strange mark. Hmm. That's not Venus. Hey, look, it's Lotus's symbol. Huh? See, it's the woman symbol with horns on it. <laughs> uh... That seems like. Oh. oh, out, 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 out. What was that about the mark again? Uh, uh nothing. <laughs> hmm. This is a Mercury symbol. Hmm. The horns symbolize the wings on Hermes' staff. Hermes, herpes, whatever. <laughs> I thought he had wings on his feet. Or at least he did in Hercules. If we can't get this thing to work, these elevators aren't going anywhere. In other words, we need a key card with the Mercury symbol on it. Probably. I guess we can't get on then. Let's just disregard the elevators for now. How about this hallway on the left? Whoa, mm. there's so many doors. D, 
Damn it. If we try and search all these, the sun's gonna go down before we've done half of them. I think the sun already set. I have a feeling this ship is the only thing that's going to be going down anytime soon. That's even worse. Well, we can come back to this hallway later. Let's check the hallway on the other side, shall we? <sighs> Time to head back to the stairs. And now the right hallway. Uh, there are doors here, too. Uh, well, I guess it's just four this time. Let's open them. All right. Let's start with this one. Huh. It isn't locked. I'm going to open it. <laughs> what? Huh. Gurneys? Well, beds. What the hell is this? Uh, doctor? This place is huge. Oh, there are beds everywhere. Is this the sick wing? Is, is this a hospital? It definitely has the smell. Could be. I see medicine cabinets and surgical tools. <laughs> hey, look there. The four doors at the end. Oh. The left door says three. Are we going to have to divide again? The second door is blank, but the third has a seven. And the rightmost door is eight. There's no doubt. They're numbered doors. Why is the second door blank? That seems kind of strange, don't you think? No point worrying about it right now. Let's see if these will open first. Yes, that sounds like a good plan. It's no use. Well, of course. If it was that easy to open these doors, what would be the point of the nonary game? What is the point of the nonary game? What's the end game of the nonary game? Everybody escapes, and the evildoer is happy, and we go about our lives with severe PTSD? We have to activate the red, or the numbered doors won't... Wait a minute. What's wrong? Mm -hmm. Look, the display on the red. There's nothing on it. Huh? Don't you remember? The red at the central staircase? If no one was inside, it said vacant. Oh yeah, you're right. But this one... There's nothing on it. Right? I wonder if it's broken. Only one way to find out. Hmm. Look at putting your hands on these things, unless you're ready to use them. It's not responding. How about the red on door 7? And door three? None of them are working. What does it mean? <laughs> I knew it. They're broken. Zero sure sucks at maintenance. No, that's impossible. You really think Zero, who prepared all of this, would make such a stupid, simple mistake? Maybe, but that doesn't explain why this thing ain't working. I believe the bottom of the device has been removed. Snake? Snake! Ace. Ace! Clover! Seven and Clover! Seven. How? How did you guys... How did you end up here? That's my line? Hmm. Perhaps we should exchange information. Makes sense. We've got all the numbered doors again. There you have it. Our half of the story. Okay, let me see if I got all this straight. When you guys got here, the bases for the Reds were already gone. And you looked all over this room, but you couldn't find anything. So you figured that there might be something in the hallway with all the doors. So you went and had a look? Yeah. And while you were looking around, you heard voices. Uh-huh. So you followed the voices and came back here. Indeed. And that was how we found you. Why don't we check those three reds again, just in case? You're right. Huh. There's a long, thin gap on the bottom. I think it's a slot for something. Uh, probably electronic. Well, this isn't good. If the red is inactive, we can't keep going. Well, uh, what about that hallway over there? Isn't there anywhere else we can go? No, there isn't. There are plenty more hospital rooms, but nothing else. Hospital rooms. 
That's what's behind all those doors? Yes. There are a number of individual rooms in addition to this large one. There was a door at the end of the hallway, but it was locked. There was an astrological symbol engraved near the keyhole, however. I was able to get a good uh, feel of it. I believe it was the symbol of Jupiter. Hmm. Not again. Those goddamn things are everywhere. I wonder what they all mean. While we're asking what things mean, uh, what's the deal with this room? I mean, I thought this was a cruise ship, but I can't imagine a cruise ship would have a hospital like this. Well, I figure it's probably a hospital ship. Chances are it's the Gigantic. Hmm. The Gigantic? What is this Gigantic? The Gigantic. She was a sister ship to the Titanic, built in the early 20th century. Yeah, that's what I was trying to remember. Did it go down? Actually, the Titanic had two sister ships, and they looked exactly the same. The Gigantic was said to be one of them. They intended to make her a passenger liner like the Titanic, but World War I began soon after the ship launched. The British Navy took her over and made her a hospital ship. At some point during the war, the Gigantic was damaged by a German mine in the Aegean Sea. She ran aground afterwards, so she didn't end up sunk. What happened to her after that? One theory going around is that a man named Lord Gordain bought her. Seemed like he'd been one of the few to survive the Titanic sinking. That trauma turned him into some kind of obsessive collector of all things related to the Titanic. Mm. Soon enough, the guy wanted the Titanic itself. Which was impossible, of course. It's stuck at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, and they can't lift it up or it will just crumble. But the Gigantic wasn't. And seeing as she was identical... So you're saying this Lord Gordain bought this ship? This actually sounds like useful information for once. Though everything they've been saying thus far does add, like, layers of confusion to what's going on here. And you would be questioning everything and offering useful and not useful information. Yeah, at least I think I am. That's impossible. No way we're in some boat that's almost a hundred years old. If it's not a set, it might as well be one of the sister ships. Pipe down, just pay attention. What, that's it? Well, have you got any proof? Proof? Proof that this ship is really the Gigantic. Well, uh, this ship's got stuff that's like the Titanic and a hospital ship. Oh, for goodness. Don't tell me that's your only reason. Uh, no, I I've got more. Like? Well, uh, I mean... I don't know. I guess your memory isn't back yet, is it? Yeah. Sorry about that. Hey, 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 hey! Whoa, wait a minute! Memory isn't back? Hmm? Yeah? Your point being? Wait, was I the only one that didn't know? Why? Oh. Yeah, I guess I didn't tell you, huh? What? I told the rest of them before we ran into you on the stairs. I told him I couldn't remember a damn thing from before I woke up. What? Huh. More Ooh, mysteries. A bell. Still three chimes, but it... It sounds like the clock in the main stairway. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Huh. Twelve. Well, you skipped all the others, because it's supposed to be one chime per hour. It's midnight. Then we've still got six hours left, right? We don't have any time to screw around. Let's get going. we got to find the missing parts for the Reds. What do you mean, find? How on earth do you propose we do that? We've looked everywhere in this room. That only leaves one place to look. One? Uh, well, not just one. Hmm? Wait. Don't tell me you mean we need to search all of the other rooms. Don't freak out. We've already searched four of them. Four rooms? We just have to split up the rest between the eight of us. If each of us can do six rooms apiece, we'll have the other 48 rooms cleared in no time. That's a lot of rooms. There are 48 other rooms? Uh, just maybe? <laughs> None of this dialogue's matching the subtitles anymore. Maybe the memory is gone. Hmm. All right, so everyone knows which area they're searching? Yeah. Yes! 
We'll all meet up when the clock goes off again. Ah, uh, how about in that room with all the beds? Yeah, sounds straightforward enough. I'll shout if I find any of the components we need. I hope we can find them within the time limit. If we can't, then we'll just have to come up with another plan. We're going to let the blind dude go by himself? Right. Then let's do this. Well, I have faith in all of you to do what's best for yourself. One. It's a one. I better get back to the others. Huh? What are they doing over there? What happened, guys? That was two, four, six. Is one person missing? Jumpy, look! Vacant? <sighs> Come on, guys, who was it? I thought we were supposed to yell if we found it. Well... What the hell? What is up with you guys? Well, that's the thing. We don't know. You don't know? When I got back, it was already like this. There was no one else here. That means I was the first one back, but the missing parts were already back in the red. What? Let me see. You're right. It's in there. What about the other two? They're the same. Let me take a look. It's just as you said. All right, I, I just want to be sure here. Nobody has any idea what the hell happened here, right? Correct. None. <sighs> huh. W wait a minute. Where's Snake? Mm-hmm. Does that mean that he found them? I've no idea. There's nothing to suggest it. But nothing to suggest he didn't either. I don't suppose we'll know until we can ask him in person. Well, whatever he did or didn't do, he's pretty damn late. What the hell is he up to? Maybe he's lost. Yeah, well, that seems likely. Dude can't see. I don't know how he gets around in the first place. Exactly. No! That's impossible! Yeah, my brother's blind, but he's got really great hearing! He can get around as well as anyone who can see! So he... <laughs> He couldn't get lost. That's impossible. Yeah, he can hear perfectly well when his face runs into a wall. <laughs> I'm gonna go look for him. Oh, I'm sure he can hear that. Hey, uh, hold on, Clover. Wait. Well, that didn't work. Damn it. What should we do now? Well, the red is working now. No, we're not leaving two people behind. We should go look for them. Oh, man. This ain't good. Oh, yes. What an excellent idea. We just wasted a bunch of time looking for some piece of electronic junk. Now let's waste some more by looking for a couple of idiots. Then remain here if you feel you must, but there's no time. We've only five hours left. Let's split up. All right. I'll take this direction. Then I shall look that way. I'll be over here. Let's see you all later. All right, we should go too. Yes, let's go. But where should we start? Let's see. Hmm. The hallway with all the rooms, I would guess. We should go check out that hallway with all the rooms. Okay, let's go, Jumpy. Assuming he didn't go oh, to play poker. It's Ace. Hey, Snake, where are you? Answer me if you're there. I would make a solid stink reference, but I've never played the game. I do know the sound effect, though. Let Ace handle it. Why don't we just leave this area to Ace? We can go somewhere else. I don't mind. But where? Well, uh, let's see. We need to go somewhere that's not already being managed. He does seem like a curious person. Now, either Zero is running around here somewhere, and he put the pieces back only when a certain amount of time was going to pass, or... I don't know what. One of them's a traitor? I don't want to point fingers just yet. Let's go take a look around the casino. Okay, let's go. It's a gamble, but it's worth a try. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Isn't it obvious? I'm looking for Snake. I'm just not seeing it. 
Really? Maybe you need to look harder. I don't think that's the problem. Oh, by the way, I've got a proposal for you two. Care to hear it? Hmm. What is it? Well, I don't like to beat around the bush, so I'll get right to it. Why don't we team up? Team up? Yeah. What? You need me to explain it to you? I'm saying, why don't we go through a numbered door? Even if we wanted to, that's impossible. Why? Is it? Jumpy's bracelet number is five, mine is six, and yours is eight. Our digital root would be one. But there's no number one door in the large hospital room. The only doors there are three, seven, and eight. Then we add another person. Huh? Who? What, isn't that easy? Seven. Oh, if we add seven, five plus six plus eight plus seven equals 26. The digital root of 26, two plus six equals eight. Wait a minute. What about the other four? Ace, Snake, Santa, and Clover? Well, why don't you add them up? One plus two plus three plus four equals 10. And one plus zero equals one. The digital root for those four would be one. We'd be screwing all four of them over. That's right. And you know the number one door isn't in the big hospital room, right? Of course I know that. No! Are, are you saying you'd leave them behind? Of course not. What kind of woman do you think I am? Once we get off the ship, we could come back and rescue them, couldn't we? They'd still be stuck on here and drown. Then we wouldn't really be leaving them behind. Don't try to lie to us. I don't think you'd do anything of the sort. Really? Why do you think that? You remember, don't you? We have less than five hours left. Even if we managed to escape, there's no way we could come back to rescue them in less than five hours. Well, you never know until you try. No, no, you're not thinking this through. Even if we brought Seven with us, we wouldn't be able to get off the ship. The four of us couldn't open door nine. It is hidden, hidden but an, an exit, exit can, can be found. found. Seek, Seek a way out. out. Seek, Seek a door, door that carries, carries a nine. nine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. The digital route for the four of us would be eight, so we'd have to add Ace to make nine. That's right. Unless we bring Ace too, we'll be stuck. Oh, hmm, well, that's unfortunate. You gotta watch her. Unfortunate. That's all you have to say? Well, let's try and find another way, okay? A way to get out of here with all eight of us. That's impossible. Are you being serious? And you do know that only five people, at most, can go through one of the numbered doors, right? The number nine isn't going to be an exception to that rule. Regardless, at least three people will get left behind. That's true. Huh? Yeah, I, I guess that makes sense. No, wait just a second. You're skipping over a really big detail. Is that really okay? That means three people will die in the end. Are you okay with that? That's... that's just... You think I could have a moment alone? There are some things I need to think about. Hmm. Yeah, arithmetic. That didn't turn out to be a very pleasant conversation. But it was worth hearing just so that we know her motives. Yeah. Well, regardless, let's just focus on finding Snake for now, okay? Yes, you're right. We can think about those other things later. Yeah. All right, where should we go next? Hmm, first class cabin. Let's go take a look at the first class cabin. It's really close. I mean, she's looking for him more intently than everybody else. Are you all right? <laughs> look, I know you're really worried, but, um. Long, long. Hmm? Lonely? You owe money? I said leave me alone! Uh huh. You're so annoying! Just go away and leave me alone! Just looking at you guys is pissing me off! I'm willing to accept your reaction to all of this. It's not it's not our fault that we're annoying. Go away, okay? Just go somewhere else! Stop bothering me! Frankly, this is a natural response for being in a situation like this. Not just losing your blind brother, but, you know, having a 
bomb in your belly. Uh, um... Why are you still here? Did you hear me? Uh. Huh? Fine, forget it. If you aren't gonna leave, then I'll just... All right, let's go, June. Uh, yeah. <sighs> we really need to find Snake, for Clover's sake. Rhyme. So, uh, where do you think we should go next? Get back to the hallway. Uh, why don't we go back to Sea Deck? We can take a look at that hallway with all the rooms. Okay, let's get going then. Oh, nobody's here. Let's look somewhere else. But where? Hmm. Ace is gone. Why don't we go back to the big hospital room? Okay, let's go then. He might have ended up back there. Hey, wait. That's... Why? Santa? Why did he stop looking? I guess we'll talk to him. I should have talked to Ace when I had the chance. W what are you doing? What? You can't tell? I'm checking out the red. Why? Is there something bothering you? What? It's not bothering you? Huh? This... the guts of this red. Why wouldn't you wonder who the hell put it back in here? Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm curious too, but... Who do you think did it? I don't know. Well, what about you, Junpei? Who do you think fixed this thing for us? Hmm... Lotus is suspicious. She did have the idea of going off without the others. Why would Snake put them back and then leave? Could say zero. But if nine is really is still alive... Maybe there's someone else on this ship with us. You mean someone hiding here? Yeah, well, well I mean, it's just an idea. <laughs> and you're saying this mystery person fixed the Reds? Yeah. Why? That's, um, I don't know. The captain of the Gigantic? Seems unlikely. Why? I don't know. Just a feeling. Hard to believe Zero would bring in a secret tenth player. I mean, the name of the game is the Nonary Game, for Christ's sake. You know what Nonary means, right? It means nine. No, that's not what I meant. I mean more like someone who's been living here for a long time. Or someone who, like, stayed here. Seriously? That's even more ridiculous. Why do you think Zero would leave them alone? So, in other words, one of us is the person who fixed the red. Bingo! We have a winner! But if that's true, then the person who did it doesn't want the rest of us to know that they fixed it. Yeah. Mm, but why? No idea. Maybe if they come clean on that, it means we'd find out something else. Something bad. Something bad? Dunno. But whatever it is, it's gotta be worth hiding. Hmm. I'm either trusting you more because you're sharing this with me, or you're the one who did it and you're throwing me off the scent. Darn it, I'm turning on everybody. Of course. It could have something to do with Snake's disappearance. Hmm. You think maybe they did something to Snake? Yeah. Oh. <sighs> Look, if you trust anybody in this game, you're gonna lose. You've gotta be careful. The person you trust the most could turn out to be the one who stabs you in the back. And that's that, I guess. <laughs> and I like you, June, but I can't trust you either. Let me check the hallway one more time. Let's go have a look at the hall with all the rooms. I'll go wherever you do. Let's go. I'll just double check everything. Let's go take a look around the casino. Okay, let's go. And we finished searching, that's what. That snake hasn't been anywhere we've searched. And we can't keep looking for him. Wherever he is, it's not here. We need to get moving. We don't got a choice. Lotus is right. Snake had privileged knowledge of the watches in the Red and the Dead to begin with. We don't know what else was written on that braille. We're not going to find Snake. There's a problem, though. We've got to figure out who's going to go through which door. Yes, I have a proposal. Mm-hmm. Clover's not going to leave without her brother. Why don't we decide on one person to sacrifice? Great. I pick you. Sacrifice? 
Well, perhaps that's a bit of a harsh word, but yes. You've all figured it out by now, haven't you? We can't all make it through those doors. If we split into two teams of four and three people respectively, then three people will be left behind. If we split into two teams of five and two people respectively, then two people will be left behind. But if we split into two groups of three and leave one person out, then only one person will be left behind. Hmm. Leaving behind three people with two teams of four and three. Wait a minute. Hmm? Two people get left behind if we split into five and two. And one person is left behind if we split into three, three, and one. I got that part. You can't go through the numbered doors with any less than three people. But if we split into four and three, then why do three people have to be left behind? Just run the numbers. Let's say we go through door seven with one, four, five, six. Who's left over? That would be three, seven, eight. And what's the digital root for that? Three plus seven plus eight is 18, so add one, eight, nine. Exactly. But door nine isn't here, right? What about the blank door? That means three, seven, eight won't be going anywhere. That was just an example, of course. There are a lot of different combinations, but the result will always be the same. It doesn't matter which four it is. The three that are left over can't go through any of the doors. Go ahead and calculate it if you have the time. You'll see. <laughs> She's dangerously clever with math. Anyway, that's how it is. Now, if we can get back to my proposal, we only have to sacrifice one person if we split into three, three, and one. Then... You're saying we gotta decide who's gonna stay behind? Yes, we do. Given our circumstances, it's logically and morally the best solution. If the other six are to survive, then one person has to sacrifice themselves. This is like that dilemma of an AI-driven car. Do you, like, drive into, uh, like, you know, three people or, like, one people? If you don't know how the this, this scenario works, I'm not going to explain it. But it's, it's basically, like, you know, a lose-lose situation. No, that's too cruel! What's so cruel about it? To, to just sacrifice someone like that? Then what's your plan? Maybe we should sacrifice two people instead of just one. That's not what I meant! We shouldn't sacrifice anyone! I, I told you, that's impossible. Wake up! Whoa, whoa, calm down, you two. Look, what Lotus is trying to say is, you should aim to bring the greatest amount of happiness to the greatest amount of people, right? Mm. Exactly. That's how democracy works. And for that reason, I think the only fair way to decide who will be sacrificed is through a vote. How about we just pull straws? What do you think? No! That's terrible! Would it matter the one person we leave behind? Or is there enough numbers in here to allow us to go through any two sets of doors? Because that would be too coincidental. Like, the freezer is one thing. With all the right equipment in there for us to escape, having had the door shut on us to begin with, to come in here and then suddenly lose one player and then have to force this sort of moral dilemma on all of us, it would be as if Zero knew someone was going to disappear. And I'm not so sure about Snake just yet. I'm not asking you. Shut up. What about oh. you, Santa? Me? I agree, I guess. All right, that's one vote four. Counting mine, that's two. Seven. I can't say I agree with you, but we don't exactly have a choice. If we don't do something, we're all gonna die. Oh, glad to see you get it. If I can get one more vote, then it's decided. What about you, Clover? Uh, uh, she's not gonna wanna leave her brother. Hey, Clover, your brother has to be behind one of the numbered doors. No, he doesn't! Because he couldn't go in there by himself if he's behind one of the doors. He's paced! We've searched everywhere, but we didn't find him. Doesn't that mean he has to have gone through one of them somehow? Ugh. Why are you lying to her? Let's go look for him together, okay? She's manipulative. If we sacrifice one person, then we can go look for him. You agree with me, right? Okay. <laughs> the motion carries. Now, let's start a vote to... That won't be necessary. Ace! 
I will stay. That should solve our problem, yes? No! Number one, this shouldn't be the one to be staying. Uh. Uh. Ace, what are you saying? No, you can't do that. That won't solve anything. June, I'm afraid you may have misunderstood me. I said I would stay, but I never said I would sacrifice myself. Huh? I trust you. Each and every one of you. I believe you'll come back for me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's optimistic, and then there's just nuts. Those doors only go one way. You go in, you don't come out. If we go through them... You won't be able to return, correct? Yeah. True. But that will not be the case once you've escaped from the ship. What? Please. I beg you. Once you've escaped, come back and rescue me. Will the two groups be able to go through the other two doors and leave three open? Because he's one and he finds Snake. They, they can make it through. Uh, what if they're cahoots though? Ah, so much intrigue. Ideally, within the time limit Zero has given us. No, that's ridiculous. There's no way we could get back in time. We've only got five hours left. We don't even know where the hell we are. How on earth are we going to find someone to come and rescue you? And as far as we know, we are on the ocean. Not just docked the bay. Then, perhaps you would prefer to stay instead of me? <laughs> we ain't saying that. Or perhaps you would be willing to leave June behind? No! Unless she's zero, in which case, yes. You see, there's no other choice. Then I see we've come to our conclusion. Go on. Don't worry yourselves about me. I don't trust you, Xehanort. But okay. Go, quickly. Uh... <sighs> Good. Let's accept his kind offer, then. Good. I think this is the best for me. Perhaps I'll be able to take a nap. It may be my age, but I get tired so easily these days. Y'all both look suspicious! Well, what are you waiting for? We're wasting time. Why don't we hurry it up? You're right. We should get going. That's all we can do right now. Seven? Seriously. Honestly, I was getting kind of sick of listening to you guys talk. You too, Santa? I... I have to find my brother. Hmm... W wait All of you! Let's just calm down and think about this. We can't have five hours left anymore now. This has been like a half hour of talk. There has to be a way to get everyone out. There has to be. Right, Jumpy? Say something. Yeah, let's think. There's got to be another way. Fine. Forget about it. I'll figure it out on my own. What? I was, we were saying we were going to help. Ace! Come on, Ace. Please stand up. You can't give up yet. We just have to sit down together and think about this. We'll figure out a way that we can all get out of here. <sighs> what? Ace! What happened? Ace, say something. I'm all right. How are you all right? This. A syringe? What? What did you do? Soparil Beta. What does this do? Did, did you use this? Yes. It's just anesthetic. I'll be fine. Are you going to attempt to drop your heart rate to get the... Or are you trying to kill yourself? Which will also do that, but... Anesthetic? I found it earlier. While we were searching the hospital rooms, I thought it might be useful later. Oh, in case... In case you didn't get out, you want to knock yourself out. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be using it on myself. Why did you do this? Didn't I tell you? I'd like to take a nap. I really am very tired. Ace. Hmm? Is there something you want to say? I just like to sleep a little. Could you keep it down? No, don't, Ace. Don't fall asleep. Ah, 
You feel warm. So comfortable. I think I'll have a nice dream. Ace! Ace! <sighs> uh, let's get him up on a bed. Well, we really don't have a choice now. We can't let his sacrifice go to waste. Hmm. Pragmatic, aren't you? Right? <sighs> like you even mean that. You say something? No, nothing. Hmm. Yeah, well, we're not done choosing yet, are we? Huh? What do you mean? Well, we haven't decided who's going in what door. Ah, oh, yes. Yes, that's true. <sighs> Enough of this screwing around. Let's decide. You first, Lotus. Which door do you want? I, um... I want door number eight. Well, she is eight. It's the same number as my bracelet number. Got it. You're eight. You're next seven. Which one do you want? I'll take seven. I can't get along with that old lady. <laughs> what? What did you just say? Who, me? I, I didn't say nothing. <laughs> oh, you're gonna get it next time. Uh-oh. Don't make enemies. All right, who's next? Junpei, which door do you want? I need a moment to think about this. If I pick seven and I, or I pick eight, I can't take June with me. Not that I need to, but I felt like she was wanting to tag along with me more than anybody else. I'm just going to pick three and see what they have to say. I want to go through door number three. Nope, you can't. Huh? Why? Because it's impossible. If we split ourselves into three and three, then we give up on going through door three. Mm. Why? The bracelet numbers for the six of us are three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are two combinations that can go through door three with three people. Three, four, five, or six, seven, eight. Yeah, either way, Junpei, which is five, and June, which is six, they get divided. That's it. Of course, two teams can't go through the same door. I see. That means one team would get left behind. That's right. That doesn't happen if we go through door seven or eight. No, they're fine. We've got three options. Option A, have three, five, and eight go through door seven, and four, six, seven go through door eight. Option B, four, five, and seven go through seven, and three, six, and eight go through eight. Option C, three, six, and seven go through seven, and four, five, and eight get eight. Those are the only three options. That's it. I'm glad you mathed that out. Because I'm not even going to remember what you just said. Except for the fact that Jumpy and June have to divide up this round. No matter what. It's just who I'm trying to stay close with. And Santa and Lotus have proven both to be very useful so far. At least if we want to get all six of us out of here. Wait. Hmm? But that means... Well, now, now you're figuring it out. Five and six can never be on the same team. If we want all six of us to go through a door, then June and I can't go into the same one. <sighs> Sorry, lover boy. The mysterious romantic interest from your past is gonna have to go on our own this time. Have you molded over enough, or do you need more time? I've molded over, now I'm ready to whine. Anyway, that's the deal, so think it over. You've got two choices, seven or eight. You can't choose three. If you choose three, you're going to be leaving three people behind to die. So what are you going to do? Seven or eight. Time to choose. After thinking it over, his conclusion was... Uh, take the risk and choose door three. I'm not leaving all these people to die! Lucky number seven. Okay, okay. Fine. I'll go with door seven. Okay. Seven it is. Yeah. All right, then. That means June's got to go through eight. Huh? Why? Ugh, Junpei, you figured it out, right? Can you explain it to her? Okay, so, June, if we want all six of us to go through a door... Oh no! You're saying we aren't gonna see each other again for a long time. We've already done that. <sighs> hey, come on. You're making it sound like we're never gonna see each other again. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? 
We got split up then too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably? Well, let's look at the map. I'm sure they're gonna connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't, then neither team can get through door nine. Mm -hmm. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not gonna end this game until we get through the nine door. Hmm. Everything's gonna be fine. We're gonna see each other again. I promise. Yes. Promise? <sighs> you guys are done, right? Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate groups. I figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Whatever. All right, we're ready to go then. Let's move. Hmm. You guys ready? I guess so. But if Snake did manage to get through on accident, he wouldn't have a way out. He'd still be dead unless he somehow found a way to cheese it. I ate all of the cheese. But that still just means we're leaving Ace to die because Snake's not back here. Unless he, unless he finds his way back with Ace and they go through door three and miraculously we all see them again at the end, it's just going to paint even more confusion. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go. It's open. Let's do this. Hurry. And now we have 81 <sighs> seconds to find the end. June. Jumpy. What the hell are you doing, Junpei? What? Only 81 seconds left. No time to waste, guys. Let's get moving. Okay. Look, the door on the left. I can see the dead. <laughs> this is stressing me out. <sighs> Lots of pairs of pens. Need new pairs of pens. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> this is the second time we've gone through one of these numbered doors, but whew, you never really get used to it. I would have thought a guy your size would have bigger balls than that. Well, dang, girl. What? What the hell did you just say? Say it again. I dare you. I picked the wrong people. I picked the wrong people to be with. I'm going to die in this boat. You have no... <laughs> you little... You want to die? I'd like to see you try. You fucking brat. All right, let's go. Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for this. It's not going to do us any good. <laughs> she's upset about her brother. That I can understand, unless she's always been like this. I don't know. It didn't go with her last time. <laughs> I like this branching path, though. It's very interesting. Makes it feel like, just like the numbers, that there's a certain number of combinations of characters you could end up with and give you certain interactions. And so I like this scheme. This schematic. Uh, wait here for a minute, all right? I'm going to go see if there are any other doors. We just came through this door. Ah, and of course it's shut tight. There's a short hallway on the left here. And an iron wall. I doubt I can get through it. This door's the only option we've got, right? Yeah, looks like it. Hey, something's written on the door. On that iron plate. It says operating room. Ugh. If this thing's telling the truth, there could be body parts inside here. Ah! Well, this is probably not going to be pleasant. I don't want to go. I picked the wrong door. I picked the wrong door. I picked well, the wrong door. there's no point to standing around. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. I picked uh, the wrong door. I picked the wrong what's people. What's wrong? I picked the wrong door. No, it, it's nothing. I picked the wrong people. Let's just go. Huh? Okay. What the hell is this? This is where we go to observe. Why don't we take a look? Hey, Clover. 
I don't want to be here. 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 What's wrong? What the hell is this? It's a practice dummy. Is is this a corpse? We should probably take a closer look. Yeah. This is operation. What the hell? That's just a huge doll or something. A d doll? The world's worst doll. <sighs> You're right. It's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. I don't like this door. <laughs> well, I guess it wouldn't have been weird if you actually had any balls. <laughs> Sorry, I got that joke. It's, it's a doll and it's not a real person and... Never mind. Shut it! Don't you start with me, fatty! Be nice, Clover! Oh, <laughs> what's this? You want a piece of me, short stuff? I should have gone with the others! Yeah, bring it on, you whale! I'm gonna die here. Hey, guys! Not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. <sighs> Jeez. Anyway, it looks like he's got something the two of you could stand to have a little more of. Heart? I'm talking about a heart. Mm -hmm. huh? uh, oh, this? You mean on his chest? Yeah. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. You think maybe it's, like, a medical mannequin or something? Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's got more personal uses? Uh... No. As we already stated, the doll has no balls. <laughs> anyway... How about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Sure thing. I want out. I don't like this room. I don't like this room. I don't like medical stuff. It makes me queasy. I don't like medical stuff. I don't like the. Ah. Let's go to this. Go to this, go to this quickly, huh? Uh, that's a lot of surgery stuff. Some scalpels, a few pairs of forceps, and a couple of syringes. All of it's too rusty to be useful, though. Hey, there's a scalpel here that looks new. Hmm. Okay, give me it. Give me! It's got blood on it. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? Think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, cut it out. I don't want to look at this. Uh, I don't want to look at this. Uh, medical mannequin has got showing. Uh, yeah, yeah, gross. Uh, hey, Junpei, there's a slit in the thing's chest. Yeah, sure is. There's something in there. Maybe we can get it out. Uh, dang it. Stinking thing won't budge. Uh, it's stuck. Well, I guess you can't use force in this one then. Use something small that can fit in a hole. Yeah, we got a scalpel. Uh, no? Internal organ, specifically a lung. In that fan frickin' test. Okay, I have it selected, but it's not working. Alright. What's this? Hey, I wonder what this thing is. It says KG on the display. So it's uh, a weight? Measure? A scale? Yeah. Speaking of scale, is it me? Or does it look like Seven is dressed like some sort of fisherman? These dolls are really kind of creepy, you know. Hey, it says something on here. John? You think that's the stall's name? Yeah, John Doe. Maybe. This thing is creepy. I wonder why it's on the bed. It's prepped and ready for surgery. Let me wash up. Hmm. They used these for surgery, right? A uh, hundred years ago. Let's see, syringes, cups, a plate. There's a sort of scissorish thing. Hmm. Can I use the scissorish thing? Yeah, kosher forceps? Uh, I hope they're kosher. Bunch of surgical tools. Alright, doesn't look like there's anything else. Let me try the scissors on this. Got it! Got a fake lung. Lucky me. Do I have to assemble the doll? Preview medical mannequin is lying on the bed. Apparently, his name is John. What's under this? Time machine? Holy Frankenstein! You gotta make him a mate! Another medical mannequin? From the looks of it, this one's a chick. Good eye, Sherlock. She has a name too. Lucy. I would have expected Jane. Like Jane Doe? 
but Lucy. Well, like the missing link? Sorry, going all over the place. Poor thing. Looks like Miss Lucy only has a head and a left arm. Maybe we're supposed to gather all her parts? Great! KG on the panel. Yep, another scale. Do we have to make the match? What's this thing? It's got short iron legs. Maybe it's a heater? There's nothing inside it. Cremation? A furnace? A bomb? Hmm. Well. Fake chest. If only she had a heart. Maybe you're supposed to heat something like that gauze to kill the bacteria? There's a boiling thing over there. There's nothing on the lid or in the drawers. Hmm. The drawer is empty. Yeah, nothing there. There's a lot of different kinds of medication. It's hard to tell them apart. There's a whole bunch of bottles on the shelves. They all look like medicine. They've got labels, but they're all big medical words that I don't understand. Right. Any of you happen to be a, a uh, apothecary? No? Just a fisherman and a schoolgirl? Perhaps we should close up shop. No, I can look around. Preparation room. Okay. It's locked. We could probably find the key if we look some more. Let's look somewhere else. Got it. What about over here? Chemical room? Looks like it's locked. Guess we're going to need a key for this one. I will say, other than the art style for the characters, which I really enjoy, I like that they have little animations. They just make them feel a little bit alive. That's something that was missing in Persona, in my opinion. Or at least the version of Persona I played. So many of them. Junpei, where are you going? That's the door we came through. The only thing out there is the numbered door. I'm pretty sure I don't need to tell you that the numbered door is a one-way deal. So... You're saying... There's no point in going back there, huh? And they're nodding. Awesome. Good thing I've got them watching my back. At least they're not completely condescending like Lotus might be. Or Santa. Still, really like the code names. They're kind of clever. Okay, let's open these and combine, right? Nope, we need a heart. What's Seven grabbing it for? Hey, it feels like there's something in here. I think we can cut through the rubber part. Oh! See, you should take a look at this stuff. Let's try cutting the organ with a scalpel. Organ key! But I don't know how to play piano. Organ, get it? I wonder. That looks like a keyhole. Worth a shot. Okay. Let's try another one of the rooms. Cool, it's unlocked. Andrevo. You think you hang your coat here? There's a bunch of coat hooks. Mm-hmm. Oh, let's see. A piece of paper. What's this? Is this some kind of medical record? New material has been added to the file screen. A medical record found in the preparation room. It has records for two mannequins. There's a male mannequin named John and a female named Lucy. The record shows each mannequin's total weight and the weight of their individual parts. So we gotta make a match? Are we doing prismatic refraction in here? What's going on? Okay. The white light on the top is glowing. Yeah, but the red, blue, and purple ones still aren't lit. So, we need to put a liquid in this that causes the light to refract into the appropriate colors that cause these to glow? I'm only assuming, because if this beam is representative of all the color spectrum, then it's going to merge into white light. But if we put specific colors in here, it'll fragment and go into these other colors. But uh, I'm just guessing. Sir Isaac Newton, guide me. Hey, wait. There's a lock on the door. The key I've got won't open it. But it's got a symbol on it for one of the planets. What's this? A light switch? Hmm. Doesn't seem to be working. Why don't I have the key card anymore? Does June have it? Ah, better wash up. The sink. The doctors and nurses probably washed their hands here before an operation. Nothing suspicious here. Wash their hands and all the way up to the elbow, between the fingers, under the fingernails, then the gloves. Hmm, it won't open. Looks like it's locked. There's a red plate on it. Do you think that means something? Yeah, it matches the lights. This is the preparation room. 
this key should fit the chemical room as well, where I could get the stuff to put into that beaker over there. It's not opening. Locked. Of course. The blue plate on here seems suspicious, though. It's suspicious. It's suspicious. It's not opening. It won't even budge. It's got this purple plate on it, too. Uh, it looked pink to me, but I guess that could be the violet spectrum. Okay, let's head back. Well, wait. I just like checking everything. And, ah, uh, what the hell are you doing? Don't you want to get out of here? I'm tired of your whining. Okay, back up. And this way. Awesome, it's unlocked. Ah, uh, we got a smorgasbord of chemical warfare. Hey, Junpei, you think there are any slugs on this ship? Why, did you find salt? Huh? Well, if there are, I was thinking we could put salt on them. There you go. What's she pointing at? The label states, ah, sodium chloride. Salt, huh? <laughs> Do you think Seven will shrivel up if we put it on him? Hey, you say something? Iron equals one, salt equals two, water equals three, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and ethanol. Uh, are we trying to make some very dangerous moonshine? There's a note on the top of the table. Yeah, iron, salt, water, carbon dioxide, ammonia, and ethanol. What do you think this is a hint for? Maybe it's got something to do with this box. The box is locked. Looks like you have to enter a passcode on the keypad to open it. You can only enter three numbers. E is for enter, C is for clear. Once you input the numbers, yes, yes, yes. Let's give it a shot. But I don't know what to enter. Blue liquid. I could be a part of the blue man group. Red liquid. I can use this for the refraction back there. Hmm, something stinks. Is it coming from this bottle? It says NH3. So is that formaldehyde? Well, that of course stinks. It's ammonia. No, it's ammonia. Ah, I was not close at all. I don't. I, I was never really good at, at chemistry class. It's the one class I nearly failed. If you want to call it a C failure. Hey Junpei, there's dihydrogen monoxide on this shelf. That's water. Why don't you just say water? What's this? Looks like a can with a spray nozzle. It says CO2, carbon dioxide. So it's can filled with carbon dioxide. I guess we still say some of it correctly. Die meaning two. So there's there's one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen making carbon dioxide. Bad for the environment. Junpei, there's a bottle of iron powder on the shelf. How do you know it's iron? The label says F-E. F-E stands for iron, right? But I can't pick up the bottles. Na is sodium and Cl is chloride. Yeah, so salt is made up of one sodium atom and one chloride atom. Sodium, an explosive metal, and chloride, a noxious gas. And yet when you add together, you create salt, and it makes absolutely no sense. But that's just the world we live in. What does this puzzle want from me? I don't know yet, but I do have some coloring agents. So let's go try them out. All right, let's try red. Looks like there's something inside that bottle. Why don't you try pouring out some out to the cap? Can't see any reason why not. What's that? It's a bright red. Do you think it's blood? No, blood's thicker than that. Then what is it? Beats me. Beet juice? Cool. Cool aid Hey, it turned red. Forget about that. Did you hear that just now? Yeah. I unpoured it? How on earth did I do that? But well, now I know I can use all three. Okay. Well, I guess I poured it back into the bottle, but it didn't stain it. Did that unlock it permanently? Hey! Get the leg out! Uh, fake right leg. Right foot of a medical mannequin. I guess it's a woman's foot, but dang! Doesn't look hot at all. What's wrong with you, Seven? Have you got a thing for feet, Seven? N no, that's crazy! You sure acted kind of shady. You got a thing for feet? No, maybe kick the crap out of you. Weirdo. Not kick shaman, it's just not the time. Man, not the time. Found the beaker. Yeah, and I've got a leg. I should just, yeah, I should just use that. Et voila. 
It's blue now. I think I heard another noise. Is that what it looks like when the blue man group gives a urine sample? Let's not think about that. Aha! Break a leg, why don't you? Fake left leg. This is the left foot of the mannequin. Do you think I'm better? What? Do you think my legs are skinnier? I wasn't looking at your legs. What are you, 15? This is where we're at now. So there would have been an option to go to door three, possibly if I had gone this other route. But then another mystery might have happened. Very intriguing, very intriguing. Not the time. I want the blue liquid. And the red liquid. Aha! Someone pureed Barney! Gotcha. I get it. You combine the red liquid and the blue liquid to make a purple one. Good job, Junpei! The purple light came on and I heard it unlock. I'm sure it's unlocked. The locker with the purple plate has got to be unlocked. All right, let's see what happened. Ah. A fake stomach? Is it just me or did it look like a nose? It looked like a nose. This is a really big nose. I knew! <laughs> That's no nose. It's a space station. It's a stomach. Oh, stomach. It's a stomach. A stomach. Reassemble, Stephanie. Reassemble. Hmm. I guess we're not playing doctor just yet. All right, let's look at the other room again. I'm beginning to understand these dialogues we're having with the characters beyond their surface level value. Sure, we're getting to know who these individuals are and how they think, whether or not it's spiritual or scientific. And sure, there is a pattern of we're running into a puzzle, we're finding a scientific explanation for it, but then we sort of divert into thinking in a mystical way. It's, it's less about the order of their thoughts, but kind of the randomness. We're all in a dire situation. We've been kidnapped against our will. We're in a ship that's supposedly sinking, and we've all got bombs in our small intestines. And if we don't do what the maniac says, we all die. And we may end up dying even if we listen to what the maniac says. Because frankly, it's a maniac, so you can't trust him. But even the most rational of minds, when they're put in an irrational situation, are just going to pull at straws. Just based on their perceptions and their life experiences. And you can't take anything at face value if you are living a scenario that is way outside the confines of normal everyday life. You have to consider, is this aliens? Is this ghosts? Is this science? Is this magic? Think about what all I know about life and how I can apply it to the situation, even if it's just a flat out false interpretation of the evidence. It may not apply at all. You just got to pull out your thoughts and throw them out there. You don't know what works until it doesn't. Now, speaking of Zero, I mean, sure, Snake is a little bit sketchy, and he's giving me a catchy vibes, but what are the odds that someone else in the group of eight remaining people removed him from the equation? But I'm going to feel really weird if we suddenly find Snake later on. Not so much that, oh, he, suddenly he's suspicious, but that there might be reason not to trust him based on their experiences, but it might not be the smart thing to do because he might just be a pawn in all of this. Who knows? Anyway, that tangent aside, sorry, I gotta eventually say all these things. It can't just be me listening to the dialogue, trying to figure out what's going on with the characters, and then me just saying jokes while my mind is just working in the background, thinking through all these things. It's gotta come out eventually, which is now. And we are still stuck with this puzzle, and we've only got three of the pieces. Well, four can kind of chest, so we need one more. Not to mention the heart. And we still got the purple liquid. This is a key here. One, two, three. And then there's the three other elements, but we don't know their numbers. But where's the question? What what sort of alchemical base are we concocting here? That, that, uh, what reagency? Ah, I, I, I've got all the answers, at least half the answers, but I don't know what the question is. Salt is made up of one sodium atom and one chloride atom. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Salt is made. Okay, there's two atoms to salt. Three atoms to water. Iron has one atom. We're counting the atoms, family. <laughs> okay, what was carbon dioxide again? Oh, good stuff. Let's go for a treat. You found the ethanol. What are you talking about? I'm talking about that bottle. It says. 
Okay, so that's what ethanol is. It's C2H5OH. So, seven, eight, nine? Nine atoms? It's ethanol. That's right. It's also known as ethyl alcohol. It's pretty much what booze is made of. So, you're gonna drink it? Nah, I won't. I might say that's what it is on a label, but there could be anything in there. Yeah, pure ethanol. While there are elements to cuisine that require ethanol, such as uh, bringing out alcohol reactive elements in like a tomato sauce, ethanol itself is completely dangerous for you. It's 100% toxic. It's like, but wine, what? No, it's everything floating in there besides the alcohol that's healthy for you in wine. Just drink grape juice. You know, right now it's just bad for your brain, it's bad for your liver, it's bad for everything. Ethanol is also nine. The Nonary game. It all fits. So, one, two, three. Three, four, seven. One salt, two, three, water. Carbon dioxide, ammonium, and ethanol. Well, look at the first line. Maybe represents a number. Okay, so what? Three nines? Th three nines. I got nines on the brain. Three lines of numbers. So, one, two. Are we adding or subtracting? <laughs> what am I saying? Adding and subtracting. What am, I, am I adding them or adding them? <laughs> uh, one and... Two and one and two and one and two. Ha! I can only enter three numbers. Okay, so we add them together. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's only three numbers at all. It's not. It's not. A, it's like. Blah, blah, blah. It's three digits, not just three numbers. So I got to get the the digital root of all of these, right? Four, six, one. I'm how? Uh, I'm not even gonna ask how I'm getting this wrong. I just know I'm getting this wrong. At least it hasn't exploded yet. Oh my gosh! What? What's one plus three? Is, this is four. Two six three. Uh, two six. No, it's four six. Four six three. It's four six three. Why don't I write anything down? I don't know. Cause I'm an idiot. That's why. What? So I didn't need to. I I wasn't trying to get the digital base of any of it. Gosh. Fake right arm, thanks for giving me a hand, nobody. It's the right arm of the body. It's kind of creepy. All of this is creepy. Something in the box, yeah, this. Fake heart. Actually, the wrong thing. Let me see what they have to say about this, too. It's a heart. This thing is super creepy. This ain't good for the heart. <laughs> you got that right? You got any Cheerios, bro? You think we should go back? Yeah, I think that's probably best. Hmm? Hey, Seven, what's up? Oh, well... Is, is that a medicine bottle? I got curious about it. Here. Ethylene diamine tartrate? I have it the foggiest. Yeah, that's right. CDT. What kind of medicine is that? It's not medicine. I think it's an industrial strength detergent. Why would they have something like that here? Well, probably to clean stuff up. Clean what up? Fuck if I know. Still, it looks like it's cleaned my brain up. Hmm? You remember something? Yeah. Well, I remember a story about EDT. Happened about 50 years ago. See, here's where we get the one-on-one -on -one with the characters. And they're going to explain something scientific, and then they're going to explain something fantastical. And most of it's not going to have any bearings of what's going on, but that's kind of the point. We have no idea what's going on, so we're just grasping at straws. There was this factory somewhere in America making big old EDT crystals. <laughs> they were making it to sell as an industrial strength cleaner, like I told you before. But a year after the factory started up, something strange started happening with the crystals they were building water molecules started attaching themselves to the EDT crystals. This made them into a sort of mutation of the original crystals, called a hydrate. Once the crystals turn into a hydrate, though, it's useless as a cleaner. The factory had to just dump the crystals. As a hydrate, they were useless. But it didn't end there. After that day, the same thing started happening in EDT factories everywhere, even ones nowhere near that first American factory. So we're going with the whole like seed crystals, like crystallizing the same elements around the globe, that whole extra field thing. I will lose it 
if there's somehow something mystical going on at the end of all of this. Because it's just not necessary. This is fine as it is. They've been making crystals the same way, with the same materials and the same equipment and environment. But now, all of a sudden, every single crystal they form turned into a hydrate. In fact, ever since that day, no factory anywhere has been able to make a pure EDT crystal. Even in EDT research done years before, they'd never gotten a hydrate. But after it happened at the first factory, it just spread. It was like, man, how do you say it? Like the molecules were communicating with one another. Mm hmm That is a thing with quantum tunneling. It's not necessarily quantum tunneling, but specifically it's quantum entanglement. When two different particles are linked together over vast distances in space and time. That happens, but only on a quantum level. Once you reach sort of the the chemical level when atoms start to form molecules and those molecules form chemicals on sort of the macro scale which is where we all live you sort of lose the occurrence of the quantum effect it's not really visible it could probably still happen it might be one of the instances of uh, quantum fluctuations causing cancer even though that's just theoretical but it should not be on a macro scale transmitting information in a way humans couldn't perceive Mm -hmm. This phenomena spread throughout the world, right? Yeah, that's... that's it exactly. But how did you know? I heard another story uh, kind of like that one. When? In the freezer. What? <laughs> In the freezer? Yeah, June told me. Hmm. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be bad if there was some sort of mystical element to this. I just feel like don't buy... Uh, it's not a clever trick to throw something mystical out of nowhere if what you're selling me is something not mystical. The reverse is actually more fun. When you go in thinking something is mystical, but it turns out just to be all a fabrication, that's where you sort of get the Wizard of Oz, but you mostly get Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr. This isn't much of a complaint, but it's more of a critique. But it is fascinating that we... That all the characters here seem to have a similar repertoire of information so much so that they're actually able to share the same information with each other that should not be common knowledge but also have some of the similar information needed to actually pass the puzzles so how much does this zero person actually know about everybody ice that doesn't melt at room temperature huh ice nine that sounds familiar yeah hold up i, I feel like i can remember something it's right there do you do you know about Ice Nine? Ice Nine? Ice Nine. Ice Nine. Ice, Ice, Ice. Baby. That's it. I remember now. That woman, she's on this boat. What? Huh? That woman? Alice! Alice? Who's Alice? Come on. The woman who won't melt at room temperature. Huh? What? You know how the Titanic sank on April 15th, 1912, right? Uh, is this have something to do with the overconsumption of alcohol that uh, enabled you to survive uh, freezing temperatures? Yeah, more than 1,500 people died. Worst maritime accident in history. What about it? Did you hear about the boat that was sent to collect the dead bodies? Uh, I think that was the RMS Carpathia, right? It was a cruise liner, just like the Titanic. No, that was the ship that picked up the survivors. Right. I actually don't know anything about the ship that went to pick up the bodies. I didn't know they actually bothered to do that. The ship that collected the dead bodies was the C.S. McKay Bennett. The McKay Bennett showed up on April 17th, two days after the accident. It set out from Halifax, a port in Canada, and recovered 306 bodies. The Atlantic that far north was really cold. It would have to be for there to be icebergs and stuff. Anyway, the bodies they pulled out of the water were frozen solid. This isn't a very nice story. Mm -hmm. So, what happened next? Is this going to be like the frozen mummy? Well, they say the McKay Bennett recovered something more than just dead bodies. There were various bits of stuff floating around in the water. Things the drowned had carried with them, or stuff that dislodged as the ship sank. One of the things they found was a coffin. Huh. A coffin? Yeah, a wooden one. The craftsman who made it must have been pretty skilled. It wasn't just a wooden coffin. It was all wood. No nails, no reinforcements, no gaps in the wood anywhere. The thing was airtight. The crew got pretty curious about what might be inside it and opened it up. They had to get a wedge and hammer it open. So I made it. Mm -hmm. It 
outside. Mm -hmm. They found a woman. Or, I guess you should say, they found the dead body of a woman. That's the f it's the mummy thing! Again. Did this actually happen on the Titanic? I'm not gonna look it up, I don't wanna ruin anything. Her hair was thick and black, and her skin rich brown with no blemishes or signs of decomposition. They say that she looked gorgeous, like a goddess. She was obviously dead, but everyone who looked at her said she just looked like she was sleeping. Her skin was so lifelike, she looked like she might wake up any minute. She didn't, though. Like the rest of the bodies they found, she was frozen solid. Eventually, the McKay Bennett finished searching and returned to Halifax. The 306 bodies were unloaded and taken ashore. However, it was warm enough that they began to thaw. They say that the stink was horrible. But there was one body that did thaw. And that was... The girl in the coffin. That's right. Everybody thought for sure that she'd melt and start to rot like the rest of them eventually. But weeks passed and nothing happened. And a month passed. And another. It was summer, and she was still frozen solid. They didn't bother to bury her? After a while, people started to say she was some sort of miracle. Rumors about her started to spread. People came to visit Halifax from all over. And after a while, people started to call her All Ice. Ha <laughs> Alice! All Ice! Alice. Of course, those rumors didn't last long. Why? Well, she up and disappeared. One day Alice was there, the next day she wasn't. They say someone snuck into where they were keeping her and stole the body. With the body gone, the rumors followed pretty quickly. And after a while, no one remembered her. You might be able to find something about her if you could find a newspaper from back then, but that's about it. If this is a real folktale, I'm going to be incredibly impressed at the lengths of weirdness this game is going. Wait, you just said that she was on this boat. Yeah, I did. Alice has got to be somewhere on this ship. But why would she be on the Gigantic? Now why the hell would you say something like that? Because I know. And just what is it you know? I mean, he looks like a dock worker. What happened to Alice after she was stolen? <laughs> Tell me more. All right. Tell me. What happened to Alice? Well, around that time, the word was that there was a special black market in New York. All millionaires from all over the world. I've heard that Alice went up for auction there. The person who won the auction was... Lord Dashiell Gordain. The guy who was obsessed with everything Titanic. And who owns the gigantic? This is getting this is getting kind of cool if it's actually like important to the plot. Cause zero be Lord Deschel Gordain. You've heard that name before, right? Lord Gordain. Oh, isn't he the guy who bought the gigantic, the Titanic sister ship? Yeah, that's him. Although I guess he hadn't done that yet. What do you mean? Hmm. Gordain bought Alice in 1912. Four years later, in 1916, he bought the Gigantic, and he hid Alice somewhere on the Gigantic, but nobody knows where. He died in 1931, and apparently he died without ever telling anyone where Alice was hidden. However... However... what? Well, he did have one close friend who asked him, where is Alice? And he said, Alice sleeps in a small chamber past the Forest of Knowledge beneath the navel of the Gigantic. Naval is gigantic. Belly. Forced of knowledge. Books are made from paper, which is made from trees that are filled with knowledge. So, okay, a library in the belly of the ship? What the hell is that? Is it some kind of riddle? Your guess is as good as mine. So that's it. Whatever you think, I believe it. I think there's two very interesting things going on here. One, the fact that there's a mystery within this mystery. So much so that it's making me forget about Zero, and the fact that the two might be connected, and that we're here for some other purpose other than that crazy's entertainment. There's not just surface level stuff here. It goes deeper. I can feel it. In my belly. Oh, well, maybe that's just the bomb digesting. She's hidden somewhere on the Gigantic. In other words, she's hidden somewhere on this ship. Hmm. And why do we care? Over there. Uh, mixing potions? Stop wasting time and get over here! Okay, okay, we're coming. Jeez! Yeah, so, anyway, that's the story. It might be useful someday. Don't forget it. Hmm. Alice. Huh. That mummy, that mummy wasn't, wasn't just, just a normal, normal mummy. mummy. 
They say that she was frozen. The story says that from the time of its discovery all the way through to when it got put on the Titanic, even though it was carried through the desert, her body never melted. Then was that Egyptian priestess, Alice? Did the water in her body become Ice Nine? Hmm. No, that, that's nuts. There's no way somebody like that could exist. I know, but this is actually intriguing. And how I'm getting this information is also intriguing because it means I have to go with certain people to certain rooms to get a certain piece of information. So I wonder how much it would have differed if I made other choices or in some roundabout way, I would have gotten the information regardless. But it is fascinating. Okay, so we collected the six parts of the medical mannequin. So the ones we've got for Lucy must be... Yeah, seems like it. Well, let's say we give Lucy her parts back. Any objections? Nope. Agreed. All right, let's get started. Combine! Go, go, power it! No. She looks gorgeous. Oh, there's a number on here. 51 kilograms? What's this? Is this the weight? Well, we were just stacking body parts on it, so it makes sense that it'd be the weight. She needs to be 53.2, though. What's this, guys? Huh? There's some sort of lid on this thing. Why don't you try opening it? Can't. There's no handle. I can't get under it with my nails, either. Hey, nothing happened. That's odd. Maybe it's the wrong weight? Wait. Yeah, well, you know how there's a scale on the side of the bed? Maybe we need to get the scale to a specific number. How are we going to do that? I think we're supposed to swap her body parts with John's. Oh, let's give it a shot. Operating instructions. The screen will display two medical mannequins. You can switch their body parts by selecting the part you want to switch out. Huh. Okay, time to play God. Adam, Eve, you ready for this? I just had to switch them all. Hey, Junpei, I just heard something. It came from John's operating table. We better check it out. Fine by me. I didn't have to think too much with that. The operation is a success. Huh? Lit on the scale. Ah, key. Hey, it opened. Oh, I get it. It must have opened because we matched John's weight to what's on the chart. Yeah, we just had to do some malpractice to get there. We got the Jupiter key. Sailor Jupiter, I will save you. I haven't seen your show, but that's I just I just wanted to make that reference. Hey, hold on. Oh, uh, what's up? Where's Clover? Huh? Oh, god damn it. Where the hell did she go? There's only so many rooms. I guess she's looking for her brother. At least I hope she is cuz she hasn't been talking about him at all. Ah, uh, okay, J just hold on a minute. I'll go get her. Sure thing. Hey, Clover, what's wrong? Come on, let's get out of here. Uh, uh... What are you doing? Did you want to come back here and say goodbye to John? <laughs> hey, Clover, can you hear me? My brother might be dead. Mm. I'm glad you're worried, though, because I was worried you weren't going to be worried. Huh? That's why we couldn't find him. If he's dead, I'm going to be next. What? What are you talking about? What's wrong with you? Uh, uh. Was he carrying your insulin or something? Oh, what do you want to do? I want to gave her the four-leaf clover? Oh, yeah. It's in my pocket somewhere. Uh, ah, here it is. A four-leaf clover. Hey, did you know? Each leaf means something. Hope, faith, love, and luck. That's what a four-leaf clover stands for. Take it. Use it as a good luck charm. Listen to me, clover. No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Faith, trust, pixie dust. Got it. <laughs> Snake, I, I mean, your brother. He's not dead. He's alive somewhere. I, I'm sure of it. You've just got to believe in that. 
But he's only alive if there's a flaw in the madman's scheme. Uh, and Snake saw right through it. Thank you. Thank you. Now come on. Seven's waiting for us at the exit. Wait, before we go, there's one thing I want to ask you. What's that? What do you think when you hear the word experiment? 626. Uh, what? Oh. Huh. I guess it was just a coincidence then. I mean, that you knew about the four leaf clover. Uh, look, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I don't want to be a jerk, but you are making less than no sense right now. Oh, no, no, no. It's nothing. Just forget about it. How do all these characters know each other? I mean, they don't know each other, but how... How are there threads between these characters that some don't know about, but Zero does? Oh, don't, don't give me that. Uh, you really think I could just drop this? What is this experiment you were talking about? You promise you won't tell anyone? Cross my heart. Really? Really. Cross John's heart. I can trust you, right? Of course you can. Okay, then. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what happened on this ship nine years ago. <sighs> More crazy exposition. Nine years? Coincidence? I think yes. Wait, wait, wait. On this ship? Yeah, this ship. It was an experiment to test some sort of psychic thing. And there's the pseudoscience. Communicating through these fields that you can't see. Fields that you can't see? Like, think about this. This is John, right? But is he really John? Not anymore. <laughs> He's a her now. Huh? Isn't this like Locke's socks? Now I'm even more lost. Or the ship of Theseus? Oh, the ship of Theseus. That one, I know. It's a thought experiment. If a ship is in a museum and it's slowly falling apart and you slowly replace the pieces that are falling apart, eventually you will reach a point where you have replaced every single original piece of the ship. Then, ask the question, is that still the ship of Theseus? Um... You don't know? You haven't heard of those paradoxes? No? Really? Not Locke's socks, but Schrodinger's cat. Okay, well pay attention then. This is how Locke's socks works. Let's say I've got a pair of socks. They're my favorite socks. One of them gets a hole in it. What would you do if that was your sock, Junpei? Throw it away. Honestly, throw it away. I've never repaired a piece of clothing ever in my life. Then again, I have put a lot of holes in a lot of clothing and kept onto it for a really long time. For the sake of the experiment, I think you want me to patch it up, but I'm gonna be true to myself. Well, I'd pitch it, I guess. But it's your favorite pair of socks! Get another pair of socks! Come on, who loves their socks that much? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Just suppose you do love them that much. Oh, I don't want to love my socks that much. Hmm. Well, uh, I guess then I'd patch it. But what if another hole opens? Then I throw them away because they're garbage! I'd add another patch, <laughs> I suppose. What if another hole opened after that? Um, another patch, I guess? Well, let's say you just keep adding new patches, until eventually the original cloth of the sock is totally gone. Once you get to that point... You've got Sally's sock. Can you really say they're the same socks you started with? Hmm. Uh, well, that... that's... oh, that's tough. So, that's the lock socks thing? Yeah, the ship of Theseus is a lot like it. The ship of Theseus. If you keep fixing the damaged parts of a ship, eventually it ends up with none of the parts it started with. Can you really say that ship is the same one you started with? And what if you took all the old parts from the first ship and built another one somewhere else? Then which ship is the real ship of Theseus? To be fair, the ship is real to whoever thinks it's real. That's sort of the that's sort of the forced perspective of it. Something doesn't really become real unless it's real to you. Kind of like a tree falling in the woods doesn't make a sound. Yes, it does. But if you're not around to hear it, is the event of a tree falling in the woods real to you? 
the one you repaired, or the one you built with all the original parts. Hmm. Hey, do you think it's the same? What's the same? These guys. Is this John, or is it Lucy now? Uh... Well, in so much that we are prisoners of the present and we cannot uh, connect to our past or our future in any meaningful way because we are forever stuck in the present, then this doll is what it is right now in the present. There's no past to it. There's no future to it. Kind of like if someone got turned into a frog. Is that frog a human? No. Did it used to be a human? Doesn't matter. Right now, they're a frog. John's head and heart are both his. But apart from those, and a single arm, the rest of his body was once Lucy's. We're just like these mannequins. Think about it. We're slowly changing over time? The cells in our body change every day. Old ones die, and new ones are born. And every seven years, we're not the same person we were before. Maybe part of my arm is made of stuff from a fish I ate once. You are what you eat? Or maybe part of your right side is made from a cow you ate. If you take it a little further, those cows and fishes are made from something else too, right? Yes, it's called the food chain. Those fish eat smaller fish, eat smaller fish, eat smaller fish. The plankton that derive from photosynthesis. Basically, we're all stardust and we all feed from the star. That's how we're all connected. Through fields that can't be seen with the naked eye. That's the most sense that anyone on this ship has made thus far. Hey, what the hell has taken you two so long? Uh, we were just running through a field, naked. How long are you going to make me wait? We don't have time to screw around. <sighs> but I'm learning so much. Oh? What were you two doing? Was this some sort of secret meeting? Why do you keep doing the number two in the subtitles whenever you do TWO? If the number is, is, is inconsequential to a mathematical formula, you should just write it out. You're confusing me. No, it wasn't. We were just... Just. It's not what it looks like. She's underage. Playing. With the mannequins. You made it worse. Huh? Let's go, Junpei. Of course, I don't know how old Junpei is. Old enough to know better. Playing with mannequins, huh? Well, you see, I used to own a Barbie dream house, and I have no excuse. Didn't know you were into that kind of thing, Junpei. So this guy who's going to drink random bottles. <sighs> <sighs> You're a dick. <laughs> a dick with no balls. Sorry. All right. I'm going to open it now. Is that cool? You don't need to keep asking. Just do it, all right? <sighs> Fine, then. What's behind door number Jupiter? <sighs> At least none of them are rigged. All right. Let's get going. Hey, man, what's up with you? You're so serious, you know? Uh -huh. Can't you sound more happy, you know, get a little excited? I should say the same about you. <sighs> Not really. Hmm. <sighs> My brother might be dead. I guess we could have put on a brave face for her sake. I'm going to be next. Why? Like hell I can. Not after hearing something like that. Hmm. You found it. I found it. There too, huh? Why am I staring at the ceiling? Every door in this place is locked up tight. How about that one? May as well give it a try. Jumpy! Huh? <gasps> Judy! June? And Santa! And Lotus too! Whoa! What the hell is this? Why are you so surprised? What are you doing here? Living. What? But we didn't... Hey, guys! Could you come take a look at this? Look on the wall here. A map of the ship's interior? It says Sea Deck. So it's the map for this floor, then? Door 7 and... Door 8. Yep, they both eventually end up at this hallway. Yeah, isn't that what I said? We aren't going to be split up permanently till we find door 9. Mm. We might get separated for a little while, but we'll see each other again. Otherwise, we won't be able to open door 9. At least they're not killing each other off alone in another room when we're not there. That's how the nonary game works. I see. Wait a sec. 
Hey, could this lead to... Oh! You've got to be kidding me. Hmm? We may as well go. Yeah. Oh, I almost forgot. We should keep this. Hmm. Ready? I'm gonna open it. I knew it. We're back. It does... In the hospital room. The door without a number. I see. I believe I understand what you're saying. Huh? Ace, you're awake. The six of you split into two teams and went through doors seven and eight. You solved the puzzles in the operating room and the laboratory. Mm. And then met one another in the hallway after opening your respective locked doors. At any rate, I feel a bit silly for my little show of altruism. Yeah. I know I said I was sure you'd come back for me. <laughs> I didn't think it would happen so soon, though. Well, we saw each other again and we ain't dead, so I say that's good enough. But what do we do about door three, and what did Snake know that we didn't? Anyway, I said we get out of this creepy old place. We found the key we need. Uh, the key? Ah, uh, yes! To the elevator that's in this location. Ain't that what I just said? I'm talking about the Jupiter key. We found it in the operating room. Right, Junpei? Yeah. Oh, the solar system keys. Mm-hmm. Jupiter for Junpei. Actually, we found one in the laboratory, too. Ah. I'd wonder if there was two. Here. The Earth key. Ah. I might lose it. It's probably better if you hold on to it. That way it won't be my fault if it gets lost. Oh, well, it's not like her outfit's got pockets. Yeah. On it. Now we have three keys that we haven't used yet. Yeah. The Jupiter key that we found in the operating room. The Saturn key card we found in the kitchen. And the Earth key Lotus just gave me. The Jupiter key is supposed to be for the door at the end of that long straight hallway, right? Yeah. If the map's right, then it connects to the central staircase. Then, next to the stairs... Wait! What about door three? Look, you saw the map, right? It's the same as seven and eight. It just lead us back to the big hospital room. There's no point to seeing what's on the other side of that door. There is a point. At mm. least there is for me. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Snake might be on the other side of door three. Well, we could backtrack and end up back here, and there might be another key. Very well. I'll be coming with you then. I've had a nice long rest. I think it's time I was up and about again. So, Seven, you'll help me, won't you? Huh? Me? Damn. Well, I guess that's how it's gotta be. So I'm going with you, huh? Yes, you are. All right, let's get moving. Okay, we're heading out. Be careful. Whoa. Didn't think I'd be hearing that from you, Lotus. She just knows what numbers need to be living in order to get out at the end. Don't let it go to your head. I'd be in trouble if the three of you bought it. Mm. The rest of us can't open the nine door. Ah, the truth comes out. At least the rooms themselves aren't booby-trapped. It's just like two main obstacles. Okay, we're off. A bomb and water. All right, we should get moving too. Huh? Get moving? Where are we going? Well, it would be a waste of time to just sit around, wouldn't it? Let me explain. Mm-hmm. Oh, I get it. We're gonna see if we can get anywhere interesting with the Jupiter key. Yes. If we're lucky, we might find Snake. Hmm. And here's the Jupiter symbol on the keyhole. Kinda looks like 24. All right, Junpei. Open it, if you please. Yeah, on it. I'd be wary of Lotus. Everything she does has multi-purpose application. Great! Back to the beginning. You sure this is a good idea? And with my original team, too. What do you mean? Well, we already searched every inch of this room, didn't we? I'm asking you if there's any reason we came back here. Why would Zero even let us come back here if there wasn't a reason? They've got to have planned for everything, right? Of course there's a reason. We're finding Snake. Man, sometimes I can't tell if you're smart or just lucky. 
Not lucky. He gave up the clover. Huh? This. The Saturn key card. And the Earth key? I'm lost. Don't you remember, Santa? On Sea Deck, where we are now, there was a big elevator behind the stairs, remember? And next to the elevator, there was a card reader with the Saturn symbol on it. When did Zero get the chance to reorganize all the systems to work with these wonky keys? And on A deck, on the door to the left? It's like something out of Resident Evil where there's puzzles that are... There was a keyhole with the Earth symbol on it, I think. Fun and neat, but make no sense with the logic of the world. So the two keys that Jumpy has? Should let us use the elevator and the door on A deck. Huh. Yes, that's right. All right, I got it. Let's get started then. What do you say we split into two teams? Lotus and I will search the Earth one, so you two can search Saturn, all right? I mean, out of the four people here, she's got the nicest personality. Sounds good. Then you guys should take this key. We have no idea what's on the other side of these. So don't go too far. Just search for ten minutes and come back. And that's how we lost Snake. There's a card reader next to the left elevator. Then let's try out the Saturn key card. Let's split up a search for clues, Daphne. Great! It looks like it's working now. All right. Now, how do I call the elevator? Do you know its number? Oh, it only has the upside down triangle on it. <sighs> I guess there's no up button. Well, we may as well try pushing this one. But down's where the water is. Look, Jumpy! Look, I'm, it, it looks like a coffin, so I ought to be Jumpy. <sighs> Sweet! It opened. Let's get going. W w wait! What? Uh, I'm not really, uh... I just... Uh, oh, gosh. June was probably afraid of... Either one of these is actually possible! <laughs> Considering the kind of sly comments she's been giving. I mean, I assume there's going to be a button that is just the up button at the bottom. So, as a boy, let's go with this thought, because it's probably the logical one. <laughs> well, um, we will be all alone in here. <laughs> Jumpy? <laughs> Let your lizard brain do the talking. Huh? Oh, uh, nothing. It's not important. Come on, let's go. I said wait a minute. Uh, okay. Why? Aren't you afraid, Jumpy? Afraid of what? Well, I've never... You know. No, I don't. It's your first time? In an elevator? I might... Get wet. Fair. That's not an innuendo. It's fair. There's water down there. Uh, uh, oh, what? <laughs> down there. I get soaking wet. Oh, my God. Well, I, I mean, of course you would. That's the way it works. <laughs> Yo, just get to the point, Romeo! I mean, I've never heard of anyone getting soaking wet uh, somewhere. <laughs> that's... That's true. What? <sighs> you don't mind? Oh my god, make the... Oh my god, make this stop. Make this misunderstanding stop. Mind what? Getting... Wet? Well, uh, I don't know. I think I'd probably, um, you know, like it. Gosh, Jumpy, you're so brave. I'm so brave and stupid. Really? Uh, I mean, I kind of think any guy would do the same thing, you know? Give me some snorkels. What happens, happens, right? I mean, if you get the chance, you've just got to go for it. <laughs> That's what a man is supposed to do, I guess. Oh my lord! Yeah. You're so cool, Jumpy. I really admire you. Don't. You have no right to. Uh, that doesn't really seem like the sort of thing you ought to admire someone for. Why not? Let her. I'm. I'm really scared. Yeah, I mean, like you said, you've never done it before. Yes. So, I don't think I'll be able to last very long. And then it'll be this was a mistake. over. This was a mistake. You're taking the joke too far. Uh, over? 
The joke is that they don't understand. Oh my gosh. I will fight to stand up to stereotypes that this is not how all guys are. Only most of them, most of the time. We're idiots. Yes, I'll go to heaven. Well, if you want to call it that, heaven? It feels kind of like you're floating in space and your mind gets all fuzzy, like when you pass out. I hear once your lungs fill with water, it's actually kind of a peaceful way to go. Not that I want to try it. At least that's what I've heard from people who have experienced it. Ah, uh, yes, I've, I've heard that too. Although I, I don't think the same thing happens to guys. <laughs> what? Yes. Huh? We sink faster. Because we have uh, no brain to float us to the top. But it would happen to men too, wouldn't it? It would happen to anyone. Except for Jesus. What would Jesus do? He would walk on the water. Once it gets into your body, the same thing happens to everyone. Oh, well, I, I mean, um, usually it, it doesn't <laughs> go inside, but man, uh, I mean, generally. Yes, it does. Well, eventually it will. It's not like you really have a choice. Your body will force <laughs> no. you to swallow some of it. Eventually. How is this so wrong and yet so not worth censoring? What are you trying to do to me? <laughs> I feel the same way. Nothing. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just saying that that's what happens. It's a psychological reaction to what you're experiencing. I'm a psycho, all right. Oh, is that so? <laughs> I know most men probably have larger lungs, but even then, I don't think you could hold your breath for 20 or, or even 10 minutes. Oh my gosh. Eventually, you'd have to breathe, and then the water would get into your lungs. Uh. Once that happens, your body won't be able to get oxygen anymore, and you'll start to feel that floaty feeling as you pass out. Not if you come up for air every once in a while. Uh. Huh. Oh. <laughs> the fact that you two are idiots is actually so sweet. <laughs> this is where we lose our freaking minds. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You wouldn't last very long. See? <laughs> <sighs> Come to think of it, the lower floor, D deck is completely underwater. But the elevator isn't wet. An elevator heading to a submerged floor. That is pretty scary. Hey, wait a minute. This elevator came up from somewhere under us, right? Um, well, yes, I guess it did. It didn't open right away after you pressed the button. There was a motor noise like it was moving, and then it opened. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, take a look inside. <laughs> it's not wet at all, is it? The walls and even the floor are totally dry. So either the flooding is fake or, similar to the Titanic, the Gigantic is able to close off different compartments that are experiencing flooding and control it. Oh, you're right. They are. Or, you know, it's just a different area. Well, let's test it. Test it? Uh, throw a shoe in there and send it down and then have it come back up. Yeah, watch this. Now... I'll just put one foot inside the elevator and look over at the buttons. Oh, there's only two, E and C. All right, I'll push E. Ding! I, I think I can hear it opening on E deck. Okay, that's done. Now I'll just press the button again. This is the weirdest ice fishing. Or ice nine fishing. Ding. Yep, not a single drop of water to be seen. See? What does that mean? How can E deck be safe if the D deck is full of water? Exactly. Well, here's what I think. The elevator shaft and E deck must be watertight and separated from wherever the ship's been punctured. It would make sense that the elevators would also be airtight. Here, uh, let me show you. 
Where'd we get the paper and pen? I see. So is that why the ship hasn't sunk? The shape of the inside keeps it all from filling with water? Yeah, I think that's what's going on. So I'm gonna go down and check it out. You stay here, all right? Um, but... Come on, just do it, all right? I'm a brave boy. I I'm coming with you! Huh? Hey, wait! Even just the thought of it passing through a floor oh, that's crap. filled with water. It closed. Creeps me out. I can't just let you go alone, you know. Ah, jeez. <laughs> it looks normal. <laughs> I'll knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. Don't hold your breath. Come on, just look around. There's no water here. Looks like a car park. You're right. It's not flooded at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. That's a whole lot of pressure on the roof. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? Well, we'd probably get really wet up there. Huh? <laughs> at any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can, once we're done looking around down here. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Okay, good idea. Now then... Iron bars. Well, we can't go over there. Right. Then maybe... Well... It looks like there's a long straight hallway down this way. Something's written on the door at the end. Wait, is that... An upside down nine? Let's check. I knew it! This is a numbered door! But we can't do anything with only the two of us. We better head back and let everyone know. Yes. Wait, what's this? Is this the map for E-Deck? I should take it with me. Mm. Not that I really use the maps. Huh. So you guys found door one. So now we've located two new doors. The six door and the one door. You know, it is interesting that E-Deck wasn't flooded. Well, we don't really know if all of E-Deck is safe. We only checked the area around the elevator. Yeah, even so, it's still very interesting. You said the sixth door was there, right? Yes. Then that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. Mm hmm. That would have meant some pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior. It's pretty mind blowing when you think about it. Yeah, I wonder how long it took. I can't even imagine how much it must have cost. I'm really fascinated by the criminal mind behind this. It would have been a ton, that's for sure. Well, that does go along with what Ace was saying. The most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization with access to a whole lot of cash. Yes, it does make sense. Hmm. 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 Um. Yeah? Um, I don't think it's a very good idea to stay here. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Well, June, Junpei and I should be able to open door one. Huh? You guys leaving me behind? Just kidding. All right, let's go. <laughs> hey! Where the hell did you guys go? Huh? <laughs> Seven? Hmm. Um. Hmm. What's wrong? What happened? What the hell kind of question is that? Snake was... Snake is... Whoa. Snake is... dead. Oh. He died, just as the ninth man did. He was... He was blind, though. Did he get lost? Did he accidentally go through a door? Oh my god. That's not true, is it? <sighs> we should make sure. Yeah, right. We should. Wait! Not that way. What? Why not? I stuck a screwdriver in there to keep the door from closing all the way. It's not locked, so you can go in that way. Uh, where is, uh... Where is he? <laughs> the shower room. On the left side of the hallway. I put a broom in there, too, to keep the door open. That means we can get in without going through the numbered door, right? Yeah, that's right. Then let's go. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. 
I really don't want to go. So I'm going to leave this episode here. How's that for a cliffhanger? Huh? Snake exploded. Apparently. Or it's another fake death. I don't know. Maybe it's just a pool of blood with his watch. I don't want to know. But I have to know. And you have to know too. So you need to stick around for the next episode. Right? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It would really help me out. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see. And I will see all you dudes in the next one. Bye. Bye.